Yo, what's up, guys? I am Thomas Dopeziola, whatever you want to call me. Welcome back to the Dope As Usual podcast. We're here to talk about life, drugs, problems, accomplishments, and everything in between. I am here with Marty O'Neill, Jurassic Graphic. What the fuck is up? Hey, and the <laughs> energy. We've been doing shit all day today, guys. Let me just let me just start. New set behind this wall just got built. Marty and I just painted all fucking the day. fuck out of that fucking set. We also painted this, not the not the designs, just the white and the black. All right, it's good as straight. <laughs> yeah, don't think we're fucking tight. We painted the black and the white, so that's a pretty smooth black over there. I like it. The other side's looking good. I just looked; mm-hmm. it's dry. Literally, the paint's drying. On the other side of this wall is another room. We just soundproofed it this weekend, and it was loud as fuck all weekend outside, and I didn't hear shit. Mm-hmm. So let's. We're safe to say that our soundproof worked. We're actually going to cut some holes in the wall this week, have the guy fill it with insulation and soundproofing. Set number two is coming along very nicely for season two. I love walking in there. When we walked in, after we painted, we're like, oh, yeah, this is, this is it. This, this is, is where it's supposed set. to be. Yeah, it's cool having so much potential in front of it. Yes, like looking at the base of it, mm-hmm. just like we did with this. Yeah, It's just too hot, guys. And we lasted all summer, mm-hmm. and it's not even hot tonight. We just... Went through the hottest part of the year and right after hottest it was over. Hottest year on Earth in Earth's history <laughs> yeah. in a fucking uh, warehouse. I dusted the entire place out with a snowblower, with a leaf blower today. Mm-hmm. So there's no dust in here. Nice. So I waited until we move yeah, yeah. to dust the entire fucking <laughs> warehouse. And there's yeah. and it's not hot anymore. Anyway, guys, uh, we toughed it out. That's what we film at night. It's fucking 10 o'clock. We film at night because it's been so hot. It's so fucking dusty because the warehouse and there's wind outside. We're by the mountains and it's just not, it doesn't, this place is sick, but you don't see the fucking sandstorm over there in the sky in the warehouse. And behind Marty, you can see we put up new racks. We got new shelving. Push trees is expanding. And on that note, the shirt I'm wearing just peeled. Mm, I'm going to go right into it. Go right into it. it. I'm fucking pissed. pissed. I just emailed my manufacturers a very long email with two venting style <laughs> uh-huh. two venting videos like so you know i, I just paid you guys for that uh you it fucked up what's uh-huh. going i was i'm never mean even when you fuck my shit up i'm never like confrontational i was just so fucking mad i had to get it out and I paid a lot of money for this everything on that rack back there guys they did i haven't sold it yet i've had it for five weeks because one of the items was fucked and i said i'm not releasing it without everything fix it so now they're fixing it I open the shirt like huh, the drop. The drops in two days. Mm-hmm. I made a new website. All right, I had my friend Mike from shout out to Mike. I had my friend Mike from Merced pick up those racks and drive them here. I paid him to drive them here. Then I get that, and half of the fucking poles don't even go to that section. So I threw half of them to somebody, and they recycled them. I only ended up with one shelf. I bought two big ass shelves. Threw one away. Essentially paid for it. Didn't even work. Then it didn't fit because the ends of the poles were bent. So they wouldn't slide together and hold. So I had to go get a hammer and pound out all of this stuff. Then I'm like, yo, it's too dirty. Had to hire someone to come power wash it. Took all the racks, laid them out individually. Had somebody power wash them. Brought them in. Put them on. Got the racks from Uline that go on. Doesn't even fit. God, I wish we had the Seinfeld thing on the sound. <laughs> My life is Kirby enthusiasm, guys. <laughs> They don't even fit. I got the racks uh-huh. early this morning. They're supposed to be here Friday. I was like, fuck it. I'm finally going to sleep. The guy calls. I'm outside. I'm on my way. I fuck, I've been here since this morning. Uh-huh. Just didn't, little didn't things. Did you wait all day for the dude to power wash? Yes, that. And then I went to the, the doctor this morning. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, he's not even in the city anymore. This is a different office. This is an ankle surgery. I go, oh, my fucking God. I called him. Oh, yeah, it's wrong on our website. <laughs> you fucking bitch. So I left. Sorry for I'm just complaining and venting, but this uh-huh. all happened today, within hours ago. No, this just happened the as clothes, we were about to the turn clothes the cameras happened, on. I, he, as he turns the cameras on, I change shirt. And go, I'm going to try the new shirt. The pee started peeling. I go, are you fucking with me? The pee came on. Uh, if you ever bought Push Trees clothes and they've cracked, uh, I did not know that's some bullshit. 
I go above and beyond to make sure that shit don't crack. I have five-year-old shirts that's not cracked. So if some shit cracks, that's manufacturing, and I look like a dick. Mm -hmm. I have refunded so many people for cracked shirts from that one dude I ordered. I had to refund like $2,000 worth of people out of my own fucking pocket and the shipping costs. I lost like four bands because this guy didn't do a very good job. Never used them again. Onto these people. Mm -hmm. They're good. They did the bags. They did all my stuff that looks really good. And the simplest print of all time started peeling. While you've been sitting around waiting for them to correct oh, the yes. previous And I've five. had them for five weeks. I've had the whole order for five weeks, but one of them was messed up. I go, I'll wait till next month to release it. Built a brand new website. Went through everything. Scrambled to get those racks. <laughs> Yo, you know how much I put into this drop? Racks. <laughs> Literally racks. <laughs> and uh, I put a down payment, house payment on this fucking, on this order. And not one of them is usable. I'm not going to sell this. I would not want anybody to go, fucking Thomas. The pee started peeling. So don't say that. Don't Please don't take this as push trees peels. No, they don't. We doesn't. don't. That's the whole point. Yeah. Like, I'm not. I'm not gonna sell that. I'll take these guys to court before I fucking. You're willing sell to that go shit. through so much shit right now mm -hmm. to not sell. to not sell the shit I want my money back You're for. You're like, this feels like sandpaper. It's not fucking I went, glossy. This is not glossed. Why is it not glossed? This is flea market shit. It looks really good, but up close, don't like it. Anything that's ever gonna be on the site, guys, just remember, it is past perfectionist fucking. Yeah. Hawkeye, laser. I describe it to people like anybody we're going to collaborate with. I'm like, hey, listen, you better be you on might shit. Think he's like all stoned and shit, but trust me, don't. he sees shit that you don't see. Uh, through the hats, I get tweezers, bro. I get through tweezers. Yeah. I've gone through thousands of hats with tweezers, me and Rosie, taking off individual li lines of string that they leave on, and I don't, I fucking hate it. Mm -hmm. It's like I have OCD or some shit. It's just being a perfectionist yeah. about your brain. Yeah, and little pieces of string. Rosie and I have done it for like nine hours straight where we had a pile this big. It doesn't seem like a lot, but of string. Yeah. <laughs> of strings, little baby strings. But making sure everything, hitting it with a lighter, tweezers, cutting, little mm. scissors. Because I don't want people to go, look at this string hanging out of this hat I bought. Fucking Thomas. Mm. I don't want that. I fucking can't stand that. <sighs> Got through that. Good. What time is it? How good. long we been? How good. long we been? How long we been here? About time. About time. That was good. Fuck. Yeah, I, I always support letting fucking everybody know what you're going through, especially I, when it happens. I'm usually, and I even said before we started, like, I really wish I didn't check the shirt. I'm in a bad mood right now. I hate filming when I'm not like super stoked, but I'm fine now. I just had to get that off my chest. That shit really it threw a wrench in everything. Sorry, guys. The Push Trees drop will not be releasing Friday. That's all I'm going to say. I'll let you guys know. What soundboard are you about to hit? <laughs> what are you about to do to me? Uh, no. 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 no, 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 no. Here we go. <laughs> exactly. When I was in the bathroom, I went, oh. And I went, there's 1,500 pieces in the warehouse. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it, just because oh, you guys God. gotta remember, I hate wasting shit. So now these shirts, nobody gets to wear them. They just gotta go. They're like fucking. They're nobody uh, gets to wear them. Did you have AJ Wright growing up? Like the slightly fucking fucked up versions of the real shit. Like they gotta go there. The fuck is that mean? The AJ, <laughs> what does that mean? AJ Wright, like all the clothes in there are slightly defective. Oh, like, it's a store. Yeah, it's called Ross. Yeah, Burlington we got Coat that Factory. out here. Yeah, that's what we got out here. No, Burlington Coat Factory in Buffalo is like. Nice yep. shit. <laughs> oh, got you. It might be the same fucking thing. It's just different. Yeah. But yeah, the AJ Wright shit, slightly defective. That's where... Not they even. can't sell this. I don't give them permission <laughs> to resell this with yeah, my name yeah. on it. Of course. I'm just saying. Yeah. That shit is like all slightly fucked up. It's a shame it's so, got to go to waste. Yeah, so guys, don't worry. Pushtrees.com, none of this is going on the fucking site. It might look the same, but it's going to be redone the right fucking way. And I'm not paying a dollar for it. I want my fucking money back. And then when they do it right, I'll pay them again. But as of now, I want my house down payment back. Mm. It's been four months. I've been waiting on this order. Sorry, let's get on to something a little better. Pushtrees.com. We got a bunch of cool shit. Brand new website. Have you seen the new site? Yeah, I've seen glimpses and samples. They Done. did a great fucking job. And I love the photography, the models and everything. Model looks, looks cool. Great. That dude, his dreads are... Yeah. He just fits well with our shit. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Sorry, enough complaining... Uh, guys, this is year number eight push trees, and I'm still fucking dealing with this. Mm. 
still dealing with. Is there any version of push trees where you own the equipment and have employees running it? No. Good. Mm -hmm. It's so fucking much to do that. I'd rather just pay somebody that does their job right. I just want to pay somebody that goes, hey, you're going to do it right, right? Like when people give me the money to do videos, they go, do whatever you want. Yeah. That's what I fucking need. Yeah. Do your shit, bro. Here's the money. It's. You'd think being out in L.A. It wouldn't be such a goddamn feat to try to find somebody reliable that can. And I won't that put shit. it on blast, but I told you the brands that they do. Yeah, They're massive. Are you fucking my shit up. All right. My okay. one color. Print. My one color. It's the first time I've ever done a one color print. Uh huh. White. I have pushed three shirts from 2015 that are still perfect. Mm -hmm. But this is fresh out the bag peeling. Oh my fucking money back. Could have bought fucking a 50 pack with that. Mm. You're going to get really pissed off. You start translating that shit, the weed, math, and shit. We got a 50 pack of fucking <laughs> indoor with that. Fucker. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Sorry. On to, on to the show. I just had to get that <laughs> off my chest. God, dude, I would have went for 45 minutes uh -huh. just repeating myself. Fucking yeah. Hulking out. Uh -huh. Yeah, Marty, Marty said, hey. If you're going to collab with us and we're doing something with you, make sure you're on your shit or you're going to be this motherfucker's calling Marty. That's going to be you. Mm. Don't be that guy. Mm -hmm. We, As long as you do your job well, I'm going to fucking pay you and then I'm going to go home. That's all I want. Yeah. That's all I need. Just do your job that I paid you for. <sighs> Simple. Here we go. Simple yet eight years into this business, you're still fucking My last printers around. are cool, but... They gave me a run with new ink and it cracked. That's what I'm saying. On the biggest order I ever done up to that date. And I went, guys, I've been here for six years and you're selling me a cracked, cracking shirts. Uh -huh. Well, this relationship's over. Uh -huh. But they were, yeah, they were basically like, yeah, we're testing out some new shit. Sorry. So and you're like, well, me? that's my brand and my reputation, bitch. Don't test your shit on me. Yeah, I just don't like people, you all this full sales cracked shirts that crack, the print suck. Like, oh man, you know how much effort I go through to never hear that? Just to yeah. hear that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you actually give a shit. Nine times out of ten, people aren't even fucking seeing the shit going out the Fuck door. Fuck that, bro. I pack it. You guys are hand packing, order. looking at every nuance of the tags and the bags. And I know I'm too I'm too anal about it. But that, I mean. I don't want a string sticking out of my fucking tag. Yeah. Make sure it's perfect. Just How many millions of sure street brands have come and gone? I mean, your shit has stuck around for, for a reason. For a reason. Yep. For a fucking reason. So that's where we're at right now, guys. I'm super sorry. I know I've been talking about the Push Trees drop for how many episodes, and it's not coming this week. Just stay tuned. Pushtrees.com. Push underscore trees underscore on Instagram. That's our Instagram. I haven't posted in like three weeks because I've been waiting for all the pictures, and I just got them. Mm -hmm. And now they're not. I don't know, I'm not going to even use them right now. On to the next thing. <sighs> Season two. All right? Season two is coming. We just hired a booking agent today. Yeah. That was, that was a whole process. Clutch. Mm -hmm. Clutch. That was fun. Uh, we, not, a, not a lot of booking agents out there. No, you think there <laughs> would be. What the fuck? This is such a new industry. But, yeah, we got a couple hundred responses. and Narrowed it down. About three people. And from there, about two. So we'll see. But it's one of those things. It's not like you can hire somebody for this position and they just go do it. Mm -mm. We got to zipper them in for the next 90 days. So we had to put together a plan to what would make sense to do that. And at the same time, get you booked on other podcasts. Because just to put yeah. in perspective for the fans, kind of what Sorry, guys. we're at and where we want to be going into season two. By season, you know, this was our brand new. This was getting up and running, getting our feet, getting our identity, getting to the point where we can be recognized as a real podcast people want to go on. Yeah. By season three, halfway through season three, we we're the goal is to be about triple to 3.5%, you know. Over where we're at currently, and then really take off. I know you're saying like, triple, but bro, I'm. I'm I know I'm, I'm being real for, conservative. I'm, for 10. I'm, I'm being for conservative because I know yeah. what other people have done, and I'm just like, if we could get there, then we'd be super straight. And then yeah. there's touring, and not even that, dude. The last four weeks, we haven't five weeks, we haven't really been on the clips too hard on the shit. This fool's moving into his new house. No, no, this fool's living in his new yeah, house. Yeah, that should have stuck been in a room. With seems whole like family. a long drawn out process from the. Fucking yeah, so he's trying to type while caring about three kids. Uh -huh. Like every time I call. Something's happening or someone's hanging off you. We're really And close. he's like typing. All right. Yeah. yeah and he's seriously. typing. So it's, it's like. It's stressful. As soon as we get back. And Marty lost the keys to his. Oh, we talked about this last time. Yeah, but I found him. Found yeah, that shit fucking them. today. Today. Back in that fucking office. I'm going to start cranking out some cool online content too. 
Yeah, it's gonna so. be cool. I'm I'm really excited. I'm I've never been more motivated before. I really same, like, bro. I just I just need the things to start circulating. Yeah. I just want people to work as hard as I do, and it's mm-hmm. not gonna fucking happen. Mm-hmm. So I need people any f- times too, so you guys can work half as hard and get the job done or something. I just you already know. Mm-hmm. You already know. Sorry, damn, that shit really pissed me off. Sorry, here we go. Let's get into this fucking story. I mean, this episode. Marty and I, like I said, have been painting all day, so I've been putting Marty up on all these new crazy ass shows I've been watching. Guys, I know we don't get into this often. You know what? Let me talk about the most exciting part. So, you guys, let me tell you a little a little story. When I was about sixteen years old, I was laying on my grandpa's couch on the left side of the living room. I saw the show come on, FX. And this guy comes in and it's automatic racism jokes. And I went, What is this offensive show? What is this offensive, hysterical thing that I just witnessed? And then the intro started, and you know, they're showing background shots of of Philadelphia and all this shit happens. And then they're at a bar, and I'm like, What is this show? It's always sunny in Philadelphia, is the show I'm talking about. I accidentally stumbled upon it the first premiere night on FX. All right. Season one. You guys know how much I love movies and love filming. I just love seeing the act. Whenever I see a movie truck like parked on the side with generators, I know someone's filming like a movie. I just get hyped. I get excited like, oh, my God. Fuck, yeah, they're filming. I just love it. So I call Marty two night, two days ago because I come outside. And outside of my warehouse, there's a huge semi-trailer. And then another one. And they have all the, we're filming things. We're in Burbank, right? There's like a warehouse right here next to the street. I see people film all the time. Like we talked about the Boo Johnson podcast. You notoriously just drove we just, through a set. Yeah, we just, I drove through the set by accident, right? That place. It's, I won't say where at on Burbank. I don't want you to know where exactly where at in Burbank. But anyway, <clears throat> I look and I go, that's three semi-trucks? This is a movie. They're filming a fucking movie on the block. Holy shit. Nice. I see more. Then I see the fucking PA people. And I see the fucking taco truck and the food truck and the extras tent. And then the talent trailer. I'm like, what's being filmed here? Oh, shit. I leave. I come back. And one of the security guards parked in my fucking parking space. I'm like, yo, get the fuck out of my space. But politely. And as he backs up, I'm like walking on the side of the building just to look at the trailer because it's a sick, sick production trailer. I'm like, an Always Sunny in Philadelphia poster. Oh, another one. I'm like, yo, they must work on that show. This is so <laughs> tight. I'm just hyped. I start walking back to the warehouse door and I look at the security guard and go, are they filming It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia right here? He goes, yeah, yeah, we just started. I fucking exploded into the sky. I talked to the man for 30 seconds and he didn't give a fuck. I'm like, no, I went, no fucking way. I was on the phone with you. Uh-huh. I was on FaceTime with you, huh? Start going all trivia. I was, I was like, oh, so what the fuck? Blah, blah. I was, just, I lost my shit. Like, wait, you're telling me you're filming. It's always sunny right here. Are you fucking kidding me? So they've been filming for three days outside. I saw fucking D day one. I saw fucking D Reynolds <laughs> standing outside <laughs> at the fucking food truck. And I saw like, Oh my God! As I'm packing push trees orders, oh, while I was putting these 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 uh, poles together, I was just looking out the door. I left the door and the roll up door open just so I can see. Like, I'm just taking my time. Which never been done before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just packing orders while looking like I'm just look. I'm gonna see one of them and I'm gonna go. Uh-huh. Yeah, I love you. Just because you guys know I'm a fucking fanatic for Always Sunny. I mean, I have Danny DeVito picture in my office well it's not in the office not in the now. office anymore as soon as i found out with marty i took it and put it by the door and marty gave me a marker in case i see one of them or walk outside like yo this is in my office could you sign this shit thank you for making me laugh for 15 fucking years and um i haven't seen anybody else i just it's literally where me and marty were painting the set i was just uh-huh you kept looking out. I didn't realize you were so on it. You're really I was looking car. every time I heard a car or uh-huh. saw something. I was just. Yeah. You told the security guard, they come out here. I'm running, I'm running out, out here. here. <laughs> Don't get scared, bro. But I'm going to come out here with my sign. I'm going to fucking lose my shit. So just letting you know, this is my building. Uh-huh. But you're sitting in front of the building. Yeah, I'm gonna lose my shit and come out here. Just don't, yeah. just don't try to stop me. Basically, is what technically, I told him. you're my security guard right yeah, now. Yeah, so you're, you you're guarding to, my building. Yeah. You're. I don't know why they just sit him right in front of our door. Which is like, what if I'm a business that would piss me off? But they're nice. Anyway, 
Um, then we go out to home. Uh, where do we go? We are about to walk. Oh, we're going to get drinks. We're going to walk. There's a little store. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to be kind of vague. You know where we're at, but there's a little liquor store by us. We're going to get it or get uh, drinks. And I walk by and by the set, there's a limo. And I'm like, wait, I just saw Mac post something. Uh, Holy shit. Is this the fucking thing in the episode? And it's kind of a ripped up limo. I'm like, no way. And I look in the window and there's a sign on the seat for Phil. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. And then a script on the seat. Of the Damn. limo, and I just saw it like, oh my fucking god, <laughs> guys! I, I love that shit. I know, like, I'm not gonna go, oh my god, freak out in front of. Him. I'm just gonna like internally, like, that, you were doing that on the inside, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, I love filming. I love all that shit. Max started that show. They had no budget. I know everything about that shit. I told, I told you all yeah. of it today. Just, yeah, they had no budget. <laughs> I love them so fucking much. I love that show so severely that when I saw that they're, fil- I mean. Outside the window, you could see the always sunny fucking promo posters. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. What are the odds? It's fucking crazy. It made my day. My we, back been hurting all we day. We were I'm testing still happy. the soundproofing by way of their generator. Yeah, they had a generator outside for their trailers, and it was right outside the window, and you couldn't really hear it in our room. It's working. The set's soundproofed. I'll say the set's pretty soundproofed, guys. Yeah, my joint went out. Anyway. I'm just so fucking excited. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna see what I, I mean, I saw D, but I'm not gonna rush her. I'm gonna see one of these motherfuckers outside and I'm gonna go, thanks for the laughs, motherfucker. And I'm gonna walk back into the warehouse mm-hmm. and then I'll make you guys laugh <laughs> or something else. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like trickle down comedy. Thanks, bro. But um, yeah, sorry for the long rant. Always Sunny is being filmed outside the warehouse right now. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I, tomorrow's the last. I know everything about this filming. I asked the security guard, I'm like, oh, so it's till Thursday. Yeah, yeah, you know, we're coming here, blah, blah, blah. And I knew when this cast got there because they blacked out the back of the building so you couldn't see. Because before I could see straight in and I could see all the crew. Guys, I'm so excited. You guys know, you guys know how excited I am. It's right outside the set. Uh, like, holy yeah. shit. So happy. So, I mean, my shirt's appealing, but always sunny is outside. Uh-huh. So, uh, I'll Give take, it. take, I'll take yeah. it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Fine with me. Uh-huh. A lot of good shit going on. I was all ignorant. I'm thinking, I'm like, didn't somebody oh, have AIDS stop. and shit? You're like, what I'm the explaining fuck? the show. He goes, doesn't somebody have AIDS in that movie? I go, what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? He's like, Tom <laughs> Hanks? I go, you mean Philadelphia? The movie from the fucking 90s? Another movie I haven't Philadelphia. seen. Philadelphia. Yeah. I was like, you know, you mean when he was banging Antonio Banderas? <laughs> no, that is not always sunny in Philadelphia, Marty. That's not the show I'm talking uh-huh. about. <laughs> Yo, I love this AIDS movie. <laughs> I have a picture of ha- fucking Harvey Milk and shit. Like, no, bro, I'm, that's not what I, it's. It's Danny DeVito in a wig. Glad we cleared that up. Yeah, I had no. I just, see. I didn't even know that's what okay. that was from. Okay. Yeah. It's like, yo, you thought that uh-huh. shit was about fucking AIDS? <laughs> Never connected that shit. I mean, <laughs> I was right there. And you go. Does that show about AIDS? <laughs> No, it's uh, not, bro. Well, I guess it could be if you want. It depends on what you. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna go home and watch it. I have every season, guys, but the new one. <sighs> anyway, oh, real quick, Patty's Pub. If you're a fan, Patty's Pub is on Third and Mateo downtown. That sounds like Skid Row area, kinda. I slapped my sticker up in front because the bar that we use it for the set. Mm-hmm. I slapped a push tree sticker on the Patty's Pub stop sign. And in season 13, when Max outside all buff, you can see the Puss Trees logo right behind his fucking head. And me and Rosie were watching the premiere, and yo, I jumped to the ceiling. Mortal Kombat shit. I went to the next level, lost <laughs> my shit. I couldn't fucking believe it. You could see our logo right behind Max's head, season 13. Right here. <laughs> oh, fuck no. Surprised the fuck they, surprised they let that in. Uh, I think they forgot because they clean them all the time. And I slap them every time I stop. I just slap a new one. Fuck that. Every mm-hmm. time slapping a new one. Um, but yeah, super cool. I went inside there. It's not even Patty's Pub. They have art shows there. Mm-hmm. I was kind of disappointed. I'm, I know. I'm not in tune with a lot of all the movie references from the 80s and 90s. Even like The Office. <clears throat> all that. I got to go back and watch all that. Well, also, I remember. I told you earlier. I remember everything. So it's hard mm-hmm. for me to watch 
not comedies over and over because like mm-hmm. I already know everything that's gonna happen. But in comedies, you know what's gonna happen. It's funny, so you watch it again. I don't want to watch Tom Hanks die of AIDS again in Philadelphia. You know, you see that once or twice and it's pretty much over. Yeah, you get that. <laughs> you guys, you guys know what we're talking about. How much time are we in? Twenty eight. Okay, okay. This time, I really think we're gonna keep it an hour and a half. We'll see. We'll see. Last episode was an hour and a half. That show was damn near my favorite episode. So. Yeah, the boot, last. Boo Johnson episode, I fucking love that dude. Yeah. He is so damn cool and straight motivational. Everything about the guy is like just discipline but fun. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Sounds great. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Yeah. I mean, That's the episode just we overt positive vibes just by being a cool ass dude. He's so chill. That's like leading by example because you got people that go out that are like motivational. And they don't do it. They're trying that. to tell you they're like, they're overtly motivational. There's other people that you just. You're it's just who they are. By who they are. Yeah. yeah. He was mad, mad cool. On and off camera, he was cool as fuck. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Boo Johnson. Shout out to you guys for listening last week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even, I, before all this, I wasn't in tune with the skateboard world at all. And now I'm starting to really realize like how much of a mainstream, not mainstream, but just how big of a thing it is to people. Even like we, I was telling you the dude that's going to paint our set. I mentioned, yeah, we just had Boo Johnson on. He's like, fucking Boo Johnson? I grew up on that floor. There's a bunch of people that reacted like that. That, like, just like we were saying, street ball, and one, basketball, all that. It's yeah, like we're that explaining to people. It. Yeah, you're like, why is it so big? Oh, he loved hot sauce from man one. <laughs> it's the same love. Like, uh-huh. yo, that feels so sick. And you play basketball, you like it. Some people skate, and they look at this fool like, what the fuck? This fool does it like nothing. His little lines he does, he's just smooth and shit. It's just, mm-hmm. it's a style that makes you stand out, and he's got that for sure. Um, Yeah, so let's see if we can keep this on an hour and a half. Guys, let's stay on this topic of watching shit just because I have been, wa- Rosie's been sick for a week. Mm-hmm. Rosie's got RA, like, rheumatoid arthritis, so she had a flare-up. She's never had one so together. Yeah, I've never had one. She's never had one before. She's been fucking sick for a week. And she's finally getting better. So when I'm home, I've just been watching shit with her because she doesn't want to fucking do anything. She feels like shit. So we've been watching some crazy shit, all right? All right, we watch some crazy shit. I'm going to get into all of them, and I suggest that you go check them out. I'm not going to suggest some bullshit to you. I would never do that to you like my friend Tyler, you fuck. Tyler, I fucking hate you. He always like, you should watch a show called Love on the Spectrum. And I watch it and I go, you piece of shit. I don't want to watch exploited fucking Down Syndrome people. This is bullshit. Love on the Spectrum is people with autism. <laughs> and it's a dating show. You fucking asshole. And then he's like, you should watch Life After Lockup. And I'm like, yo, it sounds terrible. And I watched two full fucking seasons mm. of it, feeling like a piece of shit for putting my time and mm-hmm. energy. I was typing and editing, but still, I'm like, <gasps> <gasps> it's if you've known Life After Lockup, I fuck it. It follows. All right, cool. April's never met you. You've been in prison for five years. She's dating you. Got married in prison. Now you're getting out. They're following your life and how it, how it does. Uh-huh. It doesn't work out, but they're following your life. Yeah. Some of these girls are so fucking stupid. Some yeah. of these dudes are so fucking dumb falling for these people in prison. And they're obviously being played, putting these people before their kids yeah. and this and moving. It's like, did you guys follow my mom? Did you guys did you guys know my mom? <laughs> Have you ever met my mom before? Because this, the reason I hate the show, because I'm like, that little kid's me. That little kid in that scene, in that, in that group, that's me watching my mom make these terrible decisions, going to Corcoran prison every weekend to visit. That's my mom. There's other dudes. That's the thing. It's like, yo, there's other people. Why do you guys just stuck on these prisoners? He's different, but bitch, he's not. And the thing is, they're interviewing the guy and the girl, whether she's in prison or he's in prison. I know I'm fully explaining. I'm explaining a horrible show to you. Sorry. I'm not suggesting this. Sit. Do not watch it unless <laughs> you're a fucking piece of shit like I was. You're anyway, breaking this down so they don't have to watch it. Breaking it down. Yeah. But the guy's like, oh, no, I don't really love this bitch. And the girl's like, we're getting married. And the guy in prison has three other bitches waiting on him. Yeah. Or vice versa. Yeah. And you're watching going, do you really, be- you believe that, man? <gasps> and then I go, mom. Ugh, it makes me so, I know you're watching this too. And you're in the chat. <laughs> hey, man, it's okay to say you were a fucking idiot from like 30 to 40. It's fine. 
you were dating that stupid motherfucker. <laughs> you know, you don't have to date white supremacists. He was it one inmate or was she dating multiple? In, like, it's like fifteen different stories. They follow different people. No, no, no I'm talking about your ma. Oh, it's just one guy. Okay. So she wasn't like, Oh, no, 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 no. Right, I'm saying right. the decision's yeah, yeah. like, oh, uh, he's going to go for three years. Oh, I'll be there every weekend and writing and putting money on your books. Like, bitch, I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> we don't do school projects because we don't have money, but he's got money on his book. Fuck you. That's how I mm. always felt. But who gives a shit? Anyway, do not watch that show. Fuck you for making that show. Ready? Yep. And my friend Tyler. I hate your your decisions. I hate you so much for fucking in a funny way. I hate you in a funny. Don't watch Love on the Spectrum. There's exploiting <laughs> people with that autism and Down syndrome and shit. No thanks. No thank you. Yeah, that's the that's the some. It's evil two shit. people yeah. that have the same illness mm -hmm. and they're dating, but it all is this. Hey, what's up? Oh hi. It's like yo, they're they're autistic. They don't talk. That's the fucking illness they have socially fucked. So it's like it's watching two people be not comfortable. Uh -huh. And it's just ex exploitation. Mm. And it makes me feel bad. That's why I will not watch that show. But I love on the spectrum. Rosie's watching or uh, Life After Lock. I'm like, Rosie, I hate you for watching this. All right, put the next episode on. Fuck. I got to know what this bitch does. Shit. 14 episodes later. <laughs> fuck. I'm, gonna, I'm done. I will never do it again. On to some good shit. All right. That was dog shit TV. And if you watch like that Honey Boo Boo shit, that those shows are for you. You're the reason that these you're are one still of the on. Ten billion people out there <laughs> watching that shit. Yep, you're one of the reasons why that idiocracy is coming true. Have you ever seen the movie Idiocracy? You know, from now on, I'm gonna stop asking you, have you, and say, hey, you should watch. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Today I, I, know, I spit out like I spit out like yeah. thirty gems, and you go, never seen it. Go. <gasps> Yeah. I'm like, if it was before 96 and I wasn't fucking Goonies, I probably didn't see that shit. We didn't watch movies. <laughs> now that I know the dynamic with your family, you guys never watch movies. My mom, real quick story. The movie Very Bad Things. Boom, probably on the screen. The movie Very, Very Bad Things with Christian Slater and Daniel Stern, Farva, and fucking Jeremy Piven. Great movie. Super fucked up. Dark humor. Watched that about seven it was a good movie. Me and my mom and my sister watched it. Great. This is back because he asked me, did you guys have blockbusters? Go, yeah, we had blockbuster Hollywood video and this fucking mom and pop rental. The mom and pop rental, I told you, had a curtain over one of the aisles and it just said XXX. And I was like, what is that aisle? I'm like six or seven. I know it's bad because there's a curtain over it and I see creeps coming out of there. Could you imagine how fucking creepy you really well, got before the be. internet? Every fucking person was oh creepy. Oh my god! <laughs> going in there with your everybody fucking... was not even that. They got a return. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're going in. You're all on the boxes with it. Oh god! No thanks. And uh, the movie very bad things we had watched it before. My mom, like I said, this is one of the nights that where she was like, "Yo, let's do stuff." So we were gonna watch a movie, make popcorn. And my mom says, "Let's watch that movie again, the very bad things." And go, "Cool, let's rent a bunch of other ones." Blah 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 blah. Mm, it's got to be their fault because why was it? here we go we're at the checkout stand you know beep oh let me get the movie the cassette and put it in this is a cassette this is not a DVD and he gets to very bad things he beeps it and he goes you got this on is this the one you want he looks at my mom two kids my sister little me mom here's the guy I'm the cashier you sure this is what you want and my mom says yeah he goes this is not a, this is a bad movie. And she goes, I know we've seen it before. And he just like gave my mom like, Ugh. and she looked at him like they've seen the movie. We watched it together. And he goes, you've watched this with them. And the guy was like judging my fucking mom for letting us watch the movie <clears throat> internally. I, and I went, yeah, I've seen it before. It was good. And the, the guy looks at me like, oh, you've watched this R rated movie with death in it. That's the look and the vibe. My mom's like, yes, we've seen it. Just give me the movie. We get home. 30 seconds in, we realize that this man was appalled because it was very bad things, the porno. Not very bad things, the funny, dark humor comedy with Jeremy Piven in it. Uh -huh. It starts and there's people just fucking on camera. All right? I just see naked bodies and people moving. I go, ah! 
ah! And my mom goes, what the fuck? Takes it out and looks. It says very bad things. And it has like a subtitle. It's porn title. Mm. So the guy's like, you've watched this with them? That's why he was looking at us like, what the fuck? He thought my mom was a pedophile. She's not. She, Somebody at the store put the very bad things in the wrong thing. That's all it was. They put. He got like the wrong mm. case. That's all it was. Because back then they didn't have like, you remember how it was back then? Some of them were just blank cassette yeah, boxes yeah. and then you go up to the front and then they put it in the there where they ones. give you the sleeve. Yeah. For all of you that didn't know about that, that's how you used to get movies. And uh, yeah, it's the time my mom rented porn for us. It's really fucking Jesus funny. Jesus Christ. That dude's a creep for giving your mom that movie. No, he questioned her multiple know, times. Like, like, you watched this? <laughs> They've watched That's how he looked like. <sighs> so he wasn't a creep. I think he was just appalled at this woman. <laughs> and I was young. My mom was like 20 fucking three. Jesus Christ. 24. She was a young lady. It looked like their older sister probably or something. I don't know what was going on. But that happened. Anyway, I don't know how we got into that topic. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to stop asking about movies yeah. because I was like, never oh, you guys them. watch movies together. You're like, she just did drugs in that room. So yeah. we watch movies in this room. Like, hey, pay attention to that shit. So you know about every fucking movie? <laughs> the cable guy. Yeah. Before Literally, phones. This is before phones. I'm reading the back of movie cases. Watching everything. The before and after. Memorizing the credits. Watching the credits. Oh, for sure. And I never understood what key grip meant. And best boy. Best grip. And dolly. My whole life, I never got what it meant. Mm -hmm. Until I started filming and people told me, go, what? That's what best grip means? Or key grip? Yeah. I just never, I never understood it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would have. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's get on to this. I know it's a long rant. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I wanted to keep this a little different, this episode. I wanted to not talk about so many stories and just talk about what's been going on. Yeah, yeah. A little what's good. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We need some like intro music to bring in our To bring in our segments. Showtunes. Going across the screen or a little dude running with a flag across the screen. What's good? Can we do that? I'm sure we could If I green screen myself, Cordy, you can do that? Of course. We should do that. I have somebody that has a full green screen wall. I know some. Oh, we should do that. I would love it if I stopped. Stop. Uh -huh. I kept running with a fucking yeah, flag. Yeah. What's good? I'm with it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. Season two. Here we go. It's not for everybody. <laughs> it's not for everybody. I fucking love that. Hope we give my dad the sticker, buddy. Remember? Yeah. Guys, uh, like I said, Rosie was sick. Been watching a bunch of shit. Let's start. Let's start. Not in any order. So there's a movie called, or a show called Squid Games. And it's on Netflix, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's in all Korean. Korean. The second it started, it goes, so this is like Battle Royale. If you don't know what Battle Royale is, I think it's Japanese. It's a fucked up movie. Battle Royale is crazy wild as fuck. And um, it's about some high school class that has to fight to the death. And it's a law in their country. Battle Royale. Yeah, that shit's wild. You ever seen Kill Bill? Yeah, it looks like the it's girl. It's Kill Bill graphic, uh, Kill Bill gore, blood. Oh, it is the chick from Kill Bill. The girl with the spike ball at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Damn, it came out in 2000. Uh, it's a great movie. If you have time, go watch Battle Royale if you don't care about subtitles. It's a great movie. Anyway, Squid Games fucked me up. That shit was awful. In a, like, Not like bad film or bad writing. I don't like seeing people get hurt or fucked up. It's just I don't like it. If you don't like that either, do not watch the show. But this show is fucking good, man. I'm just sitting there reading Korean subtitles. For the boy. <laughs> Whoa! This was Rose. You're like, oh my God! Fuck, what did it Rewind it. I I have to read it. I missed the fucking subtitle. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. hey, can you rewind it again? It's uh, shot really fucking well. The set design, the designs are so hard, so tight. I don't want... Okay, it's a game. The show's about a game that people willingly play. Can You could possibly die while playing. That's all I'm going to give you. Mm. I don't want to tell you anymore because then I'm going to fuck it up. It's 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 fucked up. It's whoever the thought way, of this. Yeah. It's like on some Saw meets... Uh, Hunger Games. 
Well, Hunger Games is a rip off of Battle Royale, though. Okay. It's white yeah, people yeah, yeah. Battle Royale's Hunger okay. Games. Yeah. That's fair. Because uh, they just did like, hey, let's get some American actors to steal this concept. That's how I feel. I've never watched Hunger Games. Saw the preview and went, that's Battle Royale. I'm out. <laughs> and that was pretty much it. And uh, Squid Games. Go check it out, guys. Go check it out. It was really good. I think it's only like 10 or 12 episodes. Good shit. All right. Shout out to whoever. That guy, that, that guy's a good fucking actor. The second to the right. The guy smiling with a purple background. Good shit. I would like to see him in some oh, other Oh, Gong Yu? Oh, Gong. Oh, that's him. Oh, that's his name. Oh, no, no. That's a different actor. Uh, different actor. But it's all good. Everybody in the show is great. Everybody did a good job. Super believable. I like it. So, that's something you got to see. Squid Games, right? On to my next one. We won't talk about it, but this is going to... Marty, this is a little wild. Nine Perfect Strangers. All right. Guys. Not, wait, did we talk about Snowfall on this show? I don't know. I don't I remember. So. I think we did. At some, we did with Rick Ross. No? We did the college episode. Mm. About Rick Ross? I don't know. We, uh, did, did we, we did talk about uh, we met the dude, right? Mm -hmm. I don't fucking remember. I don't remember. We talked too much. We talked so <laughs> I know. We talk on the phone too much is what it is. <laughs> Fuck. I got to start making notes of yeah. like talk about this on the podcast. Uh-huh. Anyway, let's go. Nine Perfect Strangers. Such a good show. Like a really good, 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 well thought out show. The intro might be the best intro I've seen in any show. I love the fucking intro so much. It is. It just feels like drugs. I feel like I'm about to start peaking. It's a great show. Uh, right there, the guy on the left, the guy that was in Take Shelter, the white dude with the glasses, that's one of my favorite. I can't remember his name, but he's such a good fucking actor, dude. What is his name? He's so damn good. Oh, Michael Shannon? Michael Shannon. Why did I forget his name? He is so You really good. know people's fucking names. I don't know. Yeah, I forgot his name. He's really fucking good actor, man. But in this one, this one is about, I will tell you a little bit. It's about trying to talk to the afterlife. But insanely... Psychedelic induced. Mm. Bro. Whoa. I, it's one of the few shows I watched when it came out by week. And I was like, fuck, no, I gotta wait a week to watch this shit? Fuck mm. this movie. Or fuck this show. And I was still there every next week just to watch it. Guys, highly suggest you go watch Night Perfect Strangers. It was really fucking good. Every single actor did a good job. And I'll point out when people are like, uh, it was okay. The acting was a little bit. Everybody did a good job. Even the Vine kid, that black dude, that's the kid from Vine that I pointed out when we were, when we were hanging out with those dudes. And I go, and he goes, hey, that's a, uh, he goes, hey, I direct the, or I'm on the Snowfall or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's on Snowfall. Mm. He's He started off on Vine the same time I started yeah, off on yeah, Vine, yeah. bro. I was telling you. Yeah. Except he didn't go the weed route. He came like the world star funny route. And yeah. now he's on a fucking huge show. Mm. Did a good job, dude. He did a good job. I, I liked it. It was all good. Everything was good. I haven't really been seeing a lot of shit that I'm like, yo, writing, directing, film, oh, bomb. Mm -hmm. It's good sure? shit. Yeah. You fuck with it. I really like it. And for everybody in the comments saying, yeah, I loved it. I loved it too. <laughs> Nine characters is a lot of people to fucking take, to take care of. They did it perfect. Mm. Love the show. Super good. And it's one fucking season. Done. And that's it. Done. They wrapped the whole thing up in one season. Wow. I love that. Mm -hmm. Also, Vice Principles is not on my list, but Vice Principles is one or two seasons. It's with Danny McBride and the other dude. I can't remember. He's in so many things. He's so fucking good. Uh, he's such a good actor. That dude on the right, on the top, right there. I can't remember his name. He's such a good actor, Lee Russell. man. Is it really his name? Yeah. Oh, that that's him. Great actor, dude. He's so good. He's so fucking good. Anyway... Vice Principles is only one or two seasons, and it's so fucking good. It's fucking hilarious. I love this fucking poster. It's so funny, dude. I think it's like four or five years old, but it's it's such a good show. Talking about one season and done. Nine Perfect Strangers, go watch that. I feel like I just re talking to you on the FaceTime right now, and we're not even doing a show. Fuck. <laughs> Because I'm so used to like hitting fucking topic, 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 topic. Was telling me what to watch and shit. Yeah, but yeah. now it's like, yo, what? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. Here we go. 
I exposed Marty to T Grizzly today. Uh huh. Motherfucker's oh, yeah. wild. Motherfucker's wild. And I put him onto Mob Trial One. Mob figures. Mm. That was a good album. Oh yeah. Um. Okay. It's Nine Perfect Strangers, Squid Games, and we have not talked about Snowfall yet. We were talking about that on a vlog. Are you guys ready? I've been watching Snowfall. We had Rick Ross, Freeway Rick Ross, on the show not too long ago. One of the main, Franklin, if you watch Snowfall, Franklin's based off of Rick Ross. They stole his identity again, bro. Insane. The similarities, the similarities are so, so, sim, it's similar. <laughs> like the similarities are crazy, right? Anyway, Snowfall's a great fucking show. They do such a good job with character build up on there's like five, four different stories they're following, but they all like a crash, like I told mm-hmm. you. They all connect somehow. It's about Rick Rock. I mean, it's talking about Nick Rock with CIA fucking <laughs> Contra War. About the kids selling rocks in fucking South Central. Rick Ross. I mean, Franklin, the real Franklin was literally just on our show two weeks ago, and it's fucking crazy to think about how awesome that guy was. He sold more crack than anybody on the planet. Mm. Whew, damn. Fuck, I can't wait to him to come back. That was a great. I love that fucking episode. Yeah, for sure. We've it's had so many interesting, dude. Great guests come on recently. Yeah, we have, man. Um, sorry, Snowfall. Marty and I went to one of Marty's friends as as a movie producer. We went to. He invited us to go. You know, watch football, hang out, stuff like that. So we're sitting there, and it's one of those hangouts where you're like, oh, everyone in this room was invited for a reason. Yeah. yeah it's not just, oh, hey, it's come hang. It was more of like, every one of you guys is producing something. Every one of you is something, something, you something. You should all talk. You should all talk to you. The, every, did, what did it, what's the one similar question that everybody asked you? Can you think of it? Like? What's one question that every single person that you talked to that night asked you? What do you do? Besides that. I don't know what. I won't say his name. How do you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he was the one that... I, I get that, but every single person I talked to, that was the first question they asked. Mm. So how did you know this? Mm. This guy, the guy I'm talking I don't want to say yeah. his name, but how do you know so-and-so? Every single fucking person is the first thing they mm. asked me. Bro. You guys network a lot, huh? Yeah. I don't. I would have been like, mm. so what's up, man? You want to hit this? <laughs> yeah. Like, like I, I don't do that. I'm not good with that because I never think about business shit. I'm uh. always like, just chill and do my own thing. But after watching all those guys, like, this is how I want to hang out. I only want to hang out to network and fucking do business and go home. Yeah. I don't want to sit around and just sit. Because that's time well spent. Time, right? It really was. Mm-hmm. I love being in that yeah. circle. Like, you produce what? I was talking to that, that white kid with the long hair. He's mm-hmm. a fucking movie pro- I won't, I won't say it, but he'd been producing movies and shit. And he started off as a receptionist at a fucking mm-hmm. production company mm-hmm. like nine years ago. Dude, and he's telling me all these things. He does, yeah, I get the casting done. Do this. I'm like, so tell me what you do. And I had to ask, like, what do you do as a movie producer? Mm -hmm. And then we're just talking. Everybody in the room does something. And I knew I recognized that one guy. I'm looking at him like, I've seen you on some show. I just don't remember. And somebody told me, I'm like, ah, the CSI show. Mm -hmm. I knew that was this guy. And uh, so we're sitting there and just talking to everybody. Everybody's so fucking chill. That's the one thing I really liked. Like everybody was chill. Mm -hmm. The dude from Chicago, Mm -hmm. Roy, I think his name was. I was wearing the They Live shirt. He goes, hey. Yeah. They live. He's like, I did Roddy Piper's last interview yeah, yeah. ever, bro. I fucking mm. did a documentary on him and we talked for an hour. Like, mm-hmm. what? Just take a fucking seat, bro. Uh-huh. And then he's like, So that, what do you do? Yeah. That was a good idea wearing that shirt to that show. That and I just knew somebody was gonna be like, So you know they live? Like, yeah, what's up? Uh-huh. What, what <laughs> movies do you fuck with? Yeah. Cause that's my thing. Like, you like that movie? We'll, we'll probably be friends. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But he's like, Yeah, I did the last I'm like, he's like, So when it comes out, I'll let you guys know. Like, Sick. Mm. So, and I, I, every everybody was just so shocked. What do you do? I go, How do I say this? <laughs> well, Marty and I, right there, we do a podcast. Blah blah blah. What's it about? Just drugs and you know, stuff. <laughs> I hit people. I slam them with the with the slogan when they ask that now. Life, you know, problems. I just, yeah, I now. say it like I'm just thinking it. Yeah, accomplishment. Everybody loves it. Though. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, it wraps. We made that up seconds before we started. Uh-huh. Remember, I go. This is about, <laughs> and I just blurted it, and it fucking stuck yeah. in my head, and I wrote it down. I loved it. Um, anyway, go back to the party. We're talking, and that kid from the Nine Perfect Strangers, the kid from Vine I just showed you, mm-hmm. the black guy, he's on Snowfall, and he pops up on a commercial. I go, damn, 
this motherfucker's crushing it from Vine to this. I love it. Mm -hmm. Good job, bro. You stepped it into yeah. something else. You did what 99.9% .9 of people do not and cannot do right. And he did a good job of it. And I guarantee he'll be around for a while just based off the characters he played. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, fuck, RIP, Michael K. Williams fucking mm -hmm. playing Omar on The Wire. You got to watch the fucking Wire. Mm -hmm. He's forever, to me, that's, oh, that's Omar. You ever hear Conway the Machine always reference Omar and, and fucking that's who he's talking about. Because mm -hmm. he only robbed drug dealers in the show. Mm -hmm. And when he walked down the block, the drug dealers be like, fuck. Throw their bag out the window, like take it, bro. We don't want no fucking problems with this guy. Uh -huh. He walks around with two shotguns, suck, <laughs> kicks a door in and robs these drug dealers. That fuck, that's his job. That's yeah. what he's known for in that show. Like, that's Omar. Mm -hmm. When he caught with him, he Omar, throw the bags out the window. That's where they're talking. Cause they're like, nah, Omar's here. I don't want anything to do with him. Just give him the fucking money for the day. <laughs> that's how every, he walked down a block and everybody's throwing bags out the window. He's just looking. No one, uh, all right. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they, nobody wants a piece of that fucking guy. Mm -hmm. You know, they could have just popped him from the window. Mm -hmm. He was like the devil. Mm -hmm. No, I know. I know that dude. <sighs> oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> you don't shoot at him. Like, yeah, uh, well, yeah, you say he hasn't seen the usual suspects, but what happens if you shoot the devil in the back? What if I missed? Mm -hmm. That's a Kevin Spacey line. Mm -hmm. How do you shoot the devil in the back? What if I missed? Because <sighs> in that, he has a cripple hand. Mm hmm. Oh my god, it's a good movie. Too bad he's a rapist. Fuck. Yeah. I can't believe Kevin Spacey got convicted of doing that wild shit. We'll not talk about that because YouTube is gonna be weird. Uh let's continue. Anyway, Snowfall. Damn, we rant. Mm. Sorry. Damn. Anyway, yeah, I speaking rant. of YouTube also, sorry we had to change the title of the last fucking episode. Yeah, DMT trips and hard flips. YouTube took our monetization off. I changed it to always grinding, turned it right back on. Yeah, they're just going, hey, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> are you sure you want to say that? No, they can say it. Not you, though, fuck. Yeah. No, Rogan, yeah. No, no. Joe Rogan, no, he can talk about it all day. Probably do it on the show, but not you. Those are adult letters that aren't allowed in your channel. It might. God knows what might happen. I mean, Vice shows crack being cooked. There's a million rap songs with coke mm -hmm. bricks in it, so fuck you. And we got a guy talking about positivity, uh, the most amazing journey of his life. And he got age restricted, or and I got demonetized instantly. I changed it seconds later, went back on. That's why we changed the title. So back to this, guys. Uh, we're <laughs> we're still at the guys watching football, talking to all these movie dudes. They're all cool. And that guy pops up on TV, and I go and I start telling you out loud. I go, Marty. That's the guy from Vine I told you about. He's in mm. fucking Nine Perfect Strangers. He's in Snowfall. He's crushing it. And the little Mexican dude goes, oh, sick, bro. You watch Snowfall? I go, yeah, man. I fucking love it. I'm on season four, episode eight. He goes, I edit that. I edit Snowfall. I was like, I'm the sound engineer. I edit like all the sound. I go, what? He goes, yeah, like <laughs> you, know, you hear money hitting the table or somebody gets stabbed. Like, that's me. I'm doing all the shit. He's I'm the editor you're not supposed to notice. And I yes, like that he said that. I fucking that. love that. I'm the editor you're not supposed to know that's there. Nobody. I fucking love you for saying that. Nobody draws attention enough to that. Nope. You know he did a phenomenal job when you never even you never knew thought that, that yep. he was there. Yes, exactly. And he's like, yeah, I, just, I mix it. I'm the guy that does the sound, blah, blah, blah. He's like, we just uh, wrapped up episode two today of season five. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, I'm on season four, episode eight. <laughs> Don't I was like, don't tell me nothing. I didn't even tell me, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. I'm not even done yet. Like, I'm going to get some inside tips. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm like, don't say shit. Uh -huh. Don't say nothing. All right, man, I haven't <laughs> finished the season. And then, um, but okay, again, buy the fucking warehouse because we're in Burbank and there's a spot. There's a warehouse. They use it in Snowfall a lot. So every time in Snowfall, I go, wait, the warehouse is right fucking behind this. And then they showed a shot. I go, bro, that's the fucking warehouse. That was season one. So we weren't even in this building yet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's four years ago. We weren't even here yet. But mm -hmm. season four, we were in this building. Mm. So that means like we were in this room and it's right in the back of the snowfall yeah. shot. Like, oh, fuck. Yeah, it's Crazy. so fucking cool to me. I love that shit. I know you guys are like, you're fucking fanning out, geek. I love yeah. filming. I love it so much. I don't give a fuck. Like Danny DeVito. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I'm going to go about my day and start editing and fucking do the work. Uh -huh. uh, that's done. I just, for me to go, fuck yeah. It's crazy that, that like, we record our show in the same zone as all these fucking big shows. Yeah, dude, 45 <laughs> yards right there. Seriously. Danny DeVito and fucking 
Dennis Reynolds and all these guys. Uh-huh. Are, they're there right now filming. Yeah, here we are. Security guards are outside right now. We're yeah. just smoking weed. <laughs> and they're filming season 15 Always Sunny fucking yards away. And uh-huh. I can't. It's My brain's going to pop. <laughs> I can't fucking handle it. Bro. Life is coming full circle. I love it so much. I love it so much, dude. <laughs> I'm not even part of it, and I love it so much. Um, so the guy's like, yeah, I fucking do the editing and go, bro, sick. I'm like, yo, I love that. And he goes, I got my start because I edited the season, uh, the first Narcos, the first season of Narcos. I go, whoa, shit. Yeah. That's big. He's like, yeah, I got, kind of got my name out there. I'm like, yeah, yeah, bro, you were, you were the guy on Narcos. You're the fucking engineer, the sound guy. Not like the guy holding the mic. He's the guy getting the shit and going, all right, when he gets down, I know I want this sound. All right, cool. Boom, boom. All right, we'll do this. All right, cool. Layer it. He's the production. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's the guy that sees the show before you do. He's the reason that the show sounds like top notch. That I just love it. I love yeah. that unsung hero shit. For I sure. love it. It just it makes a whole difference to the sound. And it's people like that that have super long, successful careers. You know, like he's not the actor, he's not the star of the show, but he'll work on fifty uh, fifty shows. Yeah, you know the. What was it called? The narco shit, and then this shit, and then hey, he's like, on the next one. This Narcos one? Mexico was cool. It was, it was yeah. cool. He's like, I liked it. He's like, but I think ours was better. He's like, no mm-hmm. hate. That's how I feel. <laughs> I would feel the same way. I'm like, I uh-huh. think I did better. But yeah, I, but if I didn't, I would say like, nah, they they crushed it. They did better than me. I didn't step my shit up. Mm-hmm. I'm never afraid to admit that. But yeah, it was very cool. Anyway, all the snowfall shit. Then what? A week or two ago, I come back, come into the warehouse. And next door, the building next door, there's a whole fucking film team. I told you, there's a whole film team outside. And I'm looking at him like, that is an old school 90s LA bus. Are they filming fucking Snowfall right here? Because they film Snowfall on this block all the fucking time. Go, bro, is this a fucking scene from Snowfall I'm seeing? Because I'm looking there and they're setting up all this props and shit. I'm like, old LA bus prop. In the back, and, and right here is just gates and and field and uh, trees. So it looks like it could be any time. It could be the 90s, mm-hmm. the 80s, the 70s. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Trees don't have an A. You know what I mean? Like, you can't dress that's up a tree to be like, that's an 80s tree. Yeah, you really can't show the environment all like <laughs> no, that. No. So that back look, I go, that's a time shot. That's a shot for a certain time. And the way the bus look, I go, that's like early 90s. Is this fucking snowfall? Damn, that's crazy. Put that together. Yeah, real quick. I'm like, uh, that's an old bus environment behind us you need to be in a time this is a 90s shot and that show looks like it was shot in the early 80s mm. late 90s like it's supposed to be that's what it's supposed to be mm-hmm. i don't know man i was know is i've been surrounded by all these fucking people filming and it's been so tight <laughs> i love it so much man and our fucking our set's almost done the painter comes on friday he's about to kill he's the one that did the hermes building correct yeah he's done we'll, yeah. we'll shot him out. We're going to film it. We're going to put yeah, together we're gonna a film video. It. He's excited to do that. But yeah, I'm really excited about it. Our work as you showed me is unfucking real. Yeah. We showed him this and he, he quoted us. But I don't <laughs> think we need your <laughs> the quote you're thinking, bro. It's pretty much just tracing. Yeah. And he goes, "All right. Way less." Go, All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cuz uh, no. Nah, that's a good life lesson though, because every time we go to do something big, like when we first got the set built, we got an insane we got the qu- crazy quote. quote. And then the dudes like, walk uh, through and like, so you're gonna charge me 15k to make a table? Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh-huh. They should have once said, "Hey, how about this back office?" Yeah, for soundproof sure. for you. Yeah, you go, yeah oh, okay, for sure. That would have been nice. They were literally just like, "This is what you want. All right, we'll do it. Twenty five thousand yeah. dollars." But yeah, remember that quote came more back? than that. Yeah, it was like twenty six something. Yeah, we chopped that down by about ninety eight percent, and then the set cost us fucking two two and a half racks yeah. to make. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. you know what? No, table might. The set was expensive. But the walls weren't. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. The yeah. walls That's what they were charging the for and shit. But same idea with this one. We got to a, a really good place with it, and, and it's going to be good. done fast. And Me and you've painted the both sides again. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Take a picture before we start. Let's Mm -hmm. let's do it. Like, yeah, it it was. It was. It felt really good and weird doing it again. I know, but this time I'm looking at like it's real now. It's a thing. This is where the fucking the the guests are gonna sit. That's where their guests go and they get in the green room because we have a green room we don't use. It's so legit. It's so legit. It's got glass wall. You can see straight through. We don't even use it. 
and we picked this hot warehouse to make a set. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we're high, <laughs> but it's nice because it's like we get to upgrade now. Going yeah, now it's an upgrade. Two. Really is. I'm excited. We're about Maybe to get track like lighting and track, so it hits splashes of color behind us. You'll see. It's gonna be a whole. You'll see. Yeah, it's gonna it's be a whole. Gonna start getting into real. I, I'm thinking. Here. Have you ever seen Fern Gully? Oh yeah. Okay, I'm thinking Fern yeah. Gully at night when he starts like, whoa, everything's alive. That's what I want the set to look like. Mm. Like, sick. It's gonna make a huge difference. Yeah, especially when you walk in and it's not. Oh, it's 106 in here. Uh-huh. That's how bad it is in here. Yeah. It gets disgusting in here. Yeah. We can film at normal hours. And we can film at two in the afternoon. Get now. back. It won't be fucking three in the morning. Marty <laughs> lives an hour or something away, bro. Like he goes home and it's late as fuck. Uh-huh. We don't get filmed done filmed till one in the eight, one in the morning sometimes. Yeah. And I'm getting those kids to school shortly thereafter. All that. <gasps> all in one room because you're building <laughs> yes. your house. Yes. I was stuck in one room. I'm so excited to shoot my after video because I put up the before one on Instagram. This shit is going to be fucking epic. We've done so much. You know what's funny? You're like me. Like, if it's for something I'm doing client wise, I'm crushing it. If it's for myself, I'll just film with my phone real quick. Yeah. And that's all you did was yeah, film exactly. with your phone. <laughs> no. You have a phone. How much totally camera equipment? Like you didn't walk through your house, no. right? You didn't do it before that. I'm totally like that. That's me. Oh, mm. what's up? Sick. I'm yeah. going to edit it. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why. If it's for somebody else, I'm on it. I'll fucking be on my knee. Crop. Uh-huh. Zoom in. Exactly. It was for a friend, but it was for me. I'm like, no, just, just, just hold the camera right here, bro. All right. Bye. <laughs> it's like, I'm done. Done video's done. I don't know why. I've never put effort into my own things for myself, just mm-hmm. for other stuff. I feel more natural putting less effort into it. Like the videos on my YouTube, before I started doing the podcast, I wasn't probably as comfortable just talking on camera and as used to it. But I was How still, wild. A fucking performer. Oh, you didn't perform live, you said. Not so much. I mean, it wasn't that I, I mean, it would do it like how you do your videos, where I'd set it up and I'd take a couple fucking takes and eventually I would just get one big long take of my, whatever I'm trying to talk about. Gotcha. But now it's like, I, I like, I like doing lives now. I like talking to people on there. I like doing quick little drops and shit. But once I get back in my office this coming week, I'm going to really deliberately try to do like every other week, a little something informational to give people. Not even that, man. You're going to be able to start coming out here at noon, Mm -hmm. 11 in the morning. Yeah, hell yeah. I can't even imagine. It's going to be fucking amazing. We should start having people come here at 1, film till 3, you can get home before traffic. We'll figure it out. I think that'd be Mm -hmm. great. If we could start doing noon. That'd be amazing. Yeah, people probably feel a little more comfortable coming over here in the daytime and shit. It's a little ghetto out here. No, I mean, it's, little, it's just dark. You don't know. Not you even that. It's all the fools less. fucking just drunk over there. Mm-hmm. It's a bunch of drunk motherfuckers that just chill on the street out here for some reason. Mm-hmm. They, and they're just pissing. Thomas is at odds with constantly. Oh, man, <laughs> I feel like the fucking the man and shit. Cause you Mexican are. Dudes. It's, it's, and it's, they don't think I'm Mexican. They were talking mad shit about me in man. Spanish. I'm like, yo, I know some of those words. <laughs> like like Keenan Kel. Was around. it? Good Burger. I know some of those words. Isn't that how he's reading? Did you watch Good Burger? Yeah. All right. We're talking about all that Good Burger? Yeah. yeah remember course. the movie, the feature film, uh-huh. Sinbad as the teacher? And he's reading the fucking, oh, I know some of these words. <laughs> Yo, that's that's how I feel <laughs> about these fools. Like, I know some of those. Uh-huh. That means bitch ass white boy. Uh-huh. Fuck you. <laughs> I know what that means, you bitch. Uh-huh. I was going to fight one of these little bastards. I, I pretended like I knew Spanish the other day. <laughs> <laughs> We had this one painter who was fucking up. Like, we, when we were in the hotel, <laughs> yeah, we were in the fucking hotel for like five days over this goddamn painter. He's telling us he's going to be done on Saturday. Here we are, fucking Thursday. So now Thursday comes and he's talking about Sunday or some shit. And meanwhile, he tried to get April to pay him. So I'm pissed. Oh, wait, the hotel. I'm like, April's like, no, we can have our contractor explain to him in Spanish. I'm like, fuck that. I need him to feel my energy right now. I'm going there. I don't, I don't like, he's, he's got us in a fucking hotel. Like, yeah. and he's doing a shit job of paint. So I went in there. We just painted in four hours. Yeah, I know. I could have just fucking did it myself for what we were paying this fool. Yeah. So yeah, I go in there and I start pressing this motherfucker right in the house. 
And then it's that thing where it's like, I can't tell if this fool's slow or if he just really doesn't speak English at all. Because oh. I'm dipping my toe into fucking pressing this fool and he's not connecting what I'm even talking about. He's just like, so then I get David, our contractor to come out. He speaks Spanish. So I'm now I'm just kind of ranting and David's translating for me. And then I had already kind of like preemptively talked to him about this and knew what I was saying. I don't know shit about construction or paint or like or Spanish or Spanish, none of this shit. And we were like, yeah, we already had the wall textured. So I'm not understanding why you're charging us four hundred dollars to texture this wall and then <laughs> translate, translate, translate. And then I'm like, uh, it doesn't or it doesn't cost four hundred dollars to texture the wall. He translates it and to the dude, and I'm like, he said something back, something back. And I'm like, yeah, it doesn't cost that much, does it? I heard like cinquenta. I heard a, oh. I heard a number, and then the dude did the. You're moment literally of like, doing this. Yeah, bitch. Yeah. Behind the guy. Yeah, exactly. Get his ass. Get but his there ass. was a moment yeah, where it, I chimed in, where I, it seemed like I was you like, you knew what he said. Doesn't cost that though, does it? Got bitch. you. You pretended to know. I, yeah. I heard it. I heard a number, and I'm like, "We're talking about the texture." It wasn't 400, was it? I got gotcha. you. It was good. He went, "Oh fuck!" You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, oh shit! And then yeah, I fired them. <laughs> I I was like, "Cancel on the shit. It's fucking over." And I fucking fired the dude on the spot. Good. Yeah. I'm. I love firing people now. I'm done. I'm just done paying people and going. Oh, you fucked it off. Yeah. You fucking. I fired. felt bad because the dude's telling me like. I always feel bad yeah. every time. I'm like, bro, I'm a freelancer. You don't got to explain this shit to me. I understand you're coming up here fucking this shit up, but now you got my family in a hotel. Like, and I can't days. let you fuck us off forever. And you're paying the hotel and you're paying it. Yeah, paint. exactly. You're costing me extra money now. Yeah. And he was on another job. Like, I found he went on. I'm like, no, it's not my fault. You're at a fucking separate gig. Now you're rushing you to left. get here at nighttime because it was one of those. I'll be done Saturday or Sunday, but now it's Monday and I have a day job or whatever. So I. Bro, I didn't sign up for any of that shit. Nor do I give a fuck. Paint the fucking house. Ugh. Or don't. Outside or inside? Inside. This was the upstairs. That's it? Just the upstairs. With rollers yeah. or a spray? I don't know what the fuck. He was in there not with spray. He was doing a shit ass job. He didn't sand. He didn't prime. <sighs> he was we were peeling the paint off the door frame. Sounds like my shirts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Ugh. Aside you can't that, live with that, and I can't live with this. Yeah, we I both had to not, check, motherfuckers. I will not. It was funny when you this. checked that dude though, because it's. I thought you were going live. You're like, "Hey guys, what's up?" So you started oh, when I sent like, the video to the manufacturers, <laughs> I go, "Hey guys, what's up?" So, because yeah. I ha that's how I feel. So, uh -huh. and as I was talking, my like, no, <laughs> you yeah. could hear me beep. And then I went, and as I started saying the things out loud, I go, "Yeah, I just got more mad." Mm -hmm. Like, oh, so I just opened this, and it fucking peeled. And I went, it peeled. It fucking peeled. And then I started getting more mad. Ooh. Like, it fucking peeled That's how I do off. when I yell at my kids. Yeah. I try to start <laughs> off real adult. Then I get a couple sentences in. And then I'm, now you I'm have a circling around them. My fist clenched and shit. <laughs> you have a three-year-old, an eight-year-old? Yeah. No, not the three-year-old. But I She's have a 13-year-old, too. Yeah. No, the three-year-old's good. She's, She's straight. She's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but... Oh, that's I know what you mean. I am like that with her, though, too. I'm fucking... You start off trying to explain nicely. Like, listen, She's you fucking can't just, funny. You're not going to have yeah. that forever. Yeah, I know. She's one of the funniest kids I've ever <laughs> fucking come in contact with. She has a personality of like a 10-year-old, but she's in the littlest body ever. Yeah. I save everything you send to me because it's always mm -hmm. fucking hilarious. Her staring down Cam the other day was the funniest shit ever. I, I know. She, I saved she's that always video. in her underwear. I can never put funny clips out of her because she never has clothes yeah, on. Yeah, she's oh, she never wants to wear anything, bro. As soon as we get in the house, <laughs> underwear, always. So then I get all these funny clips, and I'm not going to put her on fucking Instagram in her fucking underwear. Yeah. But yeah, she's a goddamn she's character. Hilarious. You're her best friend, legitimately. She's funny as hell. It's man. really cool because I don't have any family on my side. So every time Thomas calls, hi Tom, hi, I ready. I'm ready for it. Sometimes yeah, I beat her ass to the single time. Yeah, in the back seat. No, she's not Anywhere. even paying attention. She comes running in the room. Yep, <laughs> there's been hell of times. Showing she's up running. her nails, hi. talking to Rosie and shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, your nails. Yeah. Like yo, you gotta say shit. <laughs> you just doing this. Yeah. Or she's 
But she was in, she's she's in fucking make-believe land with Cam. She's got these fake boarding passes. Oh, yeah, the video. Was. And she's going with her little Barbie boarding passes. She's going, yeah, but you're going to have to put have your COVID? seat. Does this have COVID? That's what she's asking. She's pretending they're fucking. Because they just went on a flight. That's probably what they asked. Yeah. So she's like, yeah, and Cam's like, he did something in her fantasy world that she didn't like. And she's like, bro, how am I, how do I remember the story better? Oh, you sure? <laughs> no, she says, you're not to do your boarding pass. He goes, I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to. <laughs> her fist dropped to her, her fist side. Dropped her eyebrows her went up like to her hips. Like, it went from, it's okay. I just need you to do your boarding pass to fucking. She looks psychotic. That's yeah. exactly what she said. He goes, uh-huh. I don't want to do it. And she had a pretzel in her hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she could see just the face. rage in her little hands, and yeah, then she went, "It's okay." <laughs> like what it was real. Say? Yeah, she had oh, no clothes that shit on. Was real to her. <laughs> She's standing by a bed. Can't <laughs> laying. She's eating pretzels. We're trapped out of there. Meanwhile, the bed's on the floor. We're eating fucking pretzels. Pretzels on the fucking floor. <laughs> eating dry ramen. These folks are living like fucking. They're broke up yeah. in this nice ass house, just stuck Seriously. in one room. <laughs> While it, ironic. Gets, while it gets made, yeah, it's your last taste of fucking living. It like is, you did, man. It's like camping inside for three it's weeks. It's like camping inside. <laughs> you mean having a house? Yeah, it's, it's fucking pretty campish, though. Like, I, I always like referring to homeless people as these fools sleep outside. Yeah, oh, he just sleeps outside. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. It's funnier that way. Yeah. It's like makes it not uh-huh. as bad. Like, oh, he loves to sleep outside all the time. He drinks too much and he'll sleep outside. For years. <laughs> oh shit! You mean he's homeless? Yes, bro. He's a homeless drunk he's been alcoholic. Sleeping outside for a long time. I threaten my kids with that too. No, it's fine. They'll just have to live outside. Go I ahead. tell my little brother that too. Like you have to live outside now. Well, you hear me say <laughs> things all the time to people. Like, well, you have to sleep on the porch. Yeah. Uh, I love meeting my foamy's kids because it's either it's a hit or miss. Ninety nine percent of the time, they're like, I fuck with this guy. He says some wild shit to me. I uh-huh. love fucking with people's kids because it's always like. I love fucking with people's kids until they realize my my magic tricks are just I tr- sleight of hand and shit. Like when I pretend to float on one foot from the side, bro, my little brother is nine, Johnny, and he still thinks that's true. Every what you do is you put one foot back, your front foot, they stand from the side, and you lift up your front foot, and it looks like you lift off the ground like this. But what you do is you lift your right foot under the side of your shoe, so by that time you can't see the foot. And it looks like you're above the ground. I do this. <laughs> I always do that and like pretend to fall. And my little brother Rocco, when he was a kid, I told him, they always teach you in fifth grade, but only if you have really good grades. Right when you graduate fifth grade, they show you how to do the flying thing. Mm. Flying shoes. My my uh, Supras. He said, you got your flying shoes today? I go, yep, I do. Mm. My, little brother, I, I, my other little brother, my sister, Justin's daughter, Stella, still believes it. I've known her for three years. and She's like eight. She still thinks I can fly. She still thinks I can fucking fly. Watch, when Emory, watch uh-huh. I'm going to get her. Uh-huh. And she's like, what the fuck? You could fucking fly? Uh-huh. But yeah, in fifth grade. And that's how I got my little brother. Like, yo, you better do good in school. You don't want to learn how to fly? Man, yeah. Right. Do that shit to all my kids. That's oh, I've done it to every one of my homies' kids all the time. <laughs> Riley, my homies' Bump the it other up day. to 18, 19, though. See, bro, they, they got to be a duck. <laughs> if your kid still believes that, I'm going to slap the <laughs> shit out of them. At 18? <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Gonna sock him right in the yeah. chest. Like, are you uh, fucking yeah. stupid? Uh huh. Yeah. Thought yeah. I was gonna fly. Yeah, I, I fool everybody's kids with that. I love doing it, and they never go, "Don't fuck with my kid." They go, "Thank you." Uh huh. Like, yep. And I do the smoke trick. Like at sixth grade, when that you freaked really... out me and all the fucking fans when you did that. Yeah, I know, I know. But <laughs> when you do it to kids, they go. What? Uh, my little sister. Elizabeth said that I swallowed a piece of firewood when I was a kid, and that's why I can do it. That's she believed that till she was like some eleven. Ancient shit, some it's like, oh, because shit. you have like a piece of firewood in your yeah. stomach. I'm like, yep. In sixth grade, when I got really good grades, they showed me. I used to say that all the time because by the time I hit sixth grade, if you don't believe you believe me, then you're never graduating. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty much a cutoff. I mean, you don't. If you uh-huh. still believe that shit by then, I'm gonna fucking hit you. Uh huh. You're gonna live outside. <laughs> you're definitely gonna live outside. Well, when I was when I was 16, I picked up my girlfriend. And her friend in my dad's Forest Hunter Green station wagon. Bomb. We're talking 90s. You never watched 70s show. Your dad sounds like Red Foreman. Yeah, could be. 
You said like all the shit told me version. today? Yeah. Red Wagon. This is, I mean, this was an old ass station wagon. This is the one that the doors would freeze open. I'd have to drive around holding oh. the fucking doors closed. This was an old, this was not a nice car, okay? I'm just setting the scene here. This is the wagon, you know. And she's in the back seat, and I'm like, she's like, can you roll down the windows? And I'm like, they're voice activated. Just go ahead. Stop. I'm like, just say what, just, you know, tell them to go down. They'll go down. She's like, window down. And I had it on the front seat. You're an asshole. She's like, oh, my fucking God. I tried again. Window window up. And I get, I don't, shit. I mean, it wasn't space age technology to have the fucking auto windows on the driver's seat, but it blew her fucking mind. She's high. But she was like 15, 16. That's okay. I could see people getting fooled by that. I could see that happening. Like, whoa. Oh, you're a bitch. You have a button over there. I could see that happening. I used to, Rocco, my little brother, thought I had a NOS button in my Monte Carlo for six years. And I told him I had a button I can press and it drives by itself because he's always in the back seat. He can't see my left knee. And I would just drive with my left knee. But look, Rocco. Mm. All right, tell her where to go. Left. And I just hit it. And all I do is move my right leg. The old steering wheel is a rubber, grippy. Mm-hmm. So I would just push it and I would turn like that without him looking. <laughs> Like, Rocco, you drive pretty, you drive pretty good. I would, do, I did that till he was like 10 years old, but the NOS button, I go, all right, ready? And I'd reach under my seat and nothing there. Yeah. And all I did was just gun it. Hit the gas. Go, <laughs> and I let him press it one time. Uh-huh. I love fucking with kids. Yeah. They always get hyped though. That's the best part. It's like, yo, you, I wish I had a me when I was a kid. Everybody was Seriously. a dick. <laughs> Everybody's an asshole. Nobody did cool shit. They just fucked with me. Yeah, I mean, you live half your life in fucking fantasy land. It's cool. You can. My kids want nothing more than to me to fucking just go off into some crazy fucking pretend sketch bit with them all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's you see. That's all they do. They'll yeah. live off in fantasy world for hours at a time. Mm. It's all right. It's the clipboard. Oh, it scared me. I thought it was yeah, going yeah. from outside. No. These headphones. No. Yeah, no, that fuck up my equilibrium. Yeah. Here we go. Well, how long are we in? Hour 20. No, we're not. Has it really? Yeah. We we only got fucking three notes here. Three notes, four (laughs) notes, and one says intro. (laughs) Four notes, one says intro. (laughs) I really thought it was hour and a half today, man. I got to get up early and do a wild ass weed challenge video. So Mm -hmm. looking forward to that. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Guys, stop. How did we get into that? Okay, here we go. I don't know what we were talking about. I'm going to bring something up. We'll talk about it slightly. Probably never bring it up again until we're like, yeah, we won the court case. So here we go, guys. Marty and I, remember like episode three, we talked about, holy shit, it happened. We got signed to a brand agency. and They're going to help us with our ad reads. They have not gotten us one ad. Just letting you know, Marty and I have done everything, our own ads until a couple weeks ago, and we got branded on board. And Brandon's been stereo. helping. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying they were supposed to get us ad reads, yeah, and they yeah. got us nothing besides... What I'm about to talk about. Remember Stereo? We were doing that app. Uh, it was fucking fun. I loved it. One of the guys died, so they stopped it, right? And we we even talked about the podcast. Like, we're not going to just be like, no, keep going with the contract. Like, no, bro, it's serious. Let's chill. But, yeah, they were our first, like, sponsor. They were our so, first anything. Yeah. First anything. Even though we were getting deals by ourselves the next week anyway. They never mm-hmm. got us one other deal. We told yeah. them no weed companies, and all they did was bring us weed companies. Mm-hmm. Bro, I'll do that by myself and get mm. more money than you're going to get. Mm. Fuck's wrong with you? Anyway, who I'm talking about is Notorious. Notorious LLC. Notorious whatever the fuck you want to call them. They're pieces of fucking shit. So what happened, guys, is we have never been paid. We have still not gotten paid for our entire fucking first campaign. that we talk- Remember we were talking about like how excited we were. It's like, holy shit, we're actually going to make money. They haven't even paid us yet. They're supposed to pay us net 60. It's been six fucking months. Still haven't paid us. I'm only getting into this because uh, we not talked about it, and I'm not going to let it go. And we love stereo. I like stereo. We were streaming live it on stereo. It was cool. I love it. We, we just had, had, to, we had to stop yeah. because all this bullshit that happened, and the contract got fucked, and they got stereo got fucked too. So what's this guy's name? Peter Vince? Peter Vincent? Jarvis. No, no. 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 Jarvis? I don't the know where. The guy that owns that Notorious. Out. Jarvis. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I know. That, that's somebody I fucking know probably. Yeah, Peter Vincer. There he yeah, goes. Yeah, right yeah. there. There it is. 
Peter Vincent, this guy owns Notorious LLC. I usually will never say this, but I'm putting him on motherfucking blast. That is not him. Did he gain a shitload of weight? That's him? Yeah, I mean. Holy shit. That's what he, that's, he's baiting people. That fool's <laughs> 350 pounds heavier than that right now. <laughs> Yo, he's pulling girls with that picture. Yeah. That's fucked up. Don't put that picture up. He looks yeah. cool in this picture. Don't put the, looks like put the shitty version of him up. Seth Rogen in that goddamn picture. He looks cool right there. Yeah. Like, no, he's probably pulling girls with that. <laughs> fucking piece of shit. There he is. Is that him? asshole i don't fucking know anyway we get on the call with this guy all this stuff because they owe us 25 fucking thousand dollars they actually owed us 75 but we stopped the contract it's a lot of money to us man Twenty five thousand dollars is a fucking shitload of money especially when we're doing all this ourselves brand new podcast brand completely new podcast. in the red yeah still in still kind of in the red but we're doing our thing guys this guy straight lied to us on the fucking phone for three weeks straight we talk a stereo like, yeah, we gave them $700,000 advance and they didn't do any of the stuff and now they're not answering. And we're talking to this guy. He's like, yeah, we never got payment. So, you know, I'll pay you when I can, blah, blah, blah. We're going through this, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, he was talking. We got off the phone. I called Martin. and go, he's lying. Mm. And you even said, oh, he's fucking lying. We said at the same yeah. time, this guy's a fucking liar. <laughs> I can tell by the way he was talking that he's a piece of shit. I was a drug dealer. I know when your motherfucking ass can pay me for the front and you got the money and you say you don't got the money. I know when people are lying. Yeah, about but even money. his story didn't add up. He's like, I know, but just the vibe, just the vibe. Yeah, and the I vibe knew it. was horrible. The shit he was saying, I go, oh, you're talking too much already. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to say anything. Yeah. That means you you have you're trying to yeah. cover something. It was word I, vomit, word vomit, thank word you. vomit. On, then we just make a couple little points and oh no, oh you're a liar, on, bro. Okay, cool. Anyway, turns out this guy's being sued. And remember that giant house we filmed at when Marty actually killed the butterfly? Motherfucking guy was squatting. He was squatting in that place. He wasn't even paying the fucking rent. Guys, we got hustled hard. So shout out to Notorious LLC for being complete Because we addressed, shit. we addressed it on Instagram. One of the fucking neighbors reached out One to us. One of the us. neighbors reached out to me because he's a filing a class action lawsuit and has hundreds of petitions against this guy. Because he beat the shit out of one of the fucking old that's, gardeners. That's one. I stopped. Once I realized that, I'm like. Oh, this guy's a piece of shit. I'm done. I'm just going to sue him. I'm done. Not waiting on him. I'm like, yo, he's beating up an old ass man. Yeah, there's like a, a video of him. Really, Get the really fuck really off gross. my property. Yeah, that's really fucking it's gross. It's nasty. He's with like four other dudes. And this guy's huge. He's like six fucking seven. He was a monster. Remember when we met him? I don't remember thinking that about him. but No, I mean, he was fucking. Oh, well, you're like six three. But he was fucking big. I remember just thinking, I think at, like, I'm like, this goofy looking motherfucker's in charge owner? of this shit? And I even thought that like, I feel like he's on love on the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt about him. Like, yo, are you competent to do this shit? Apparently not. <clears throat> and then he gave us a run around, get on the phone with us. But you know, Riley Reed, porn star bitch gets paid. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, not, I don't, don't mean know. like she's a bitch. Sorry. I'm, I'm just talking. The porn star woman, the girl, I don't mean, she's, yeah. she's probably super nice. I mean, nothing bad about her. But, and the other girl, Lana, Lana something, Lana Road, she got her fucking money. I, but I the kid stiffing us, he's paying his fucking rent at his own house with our fucking money is what's going on. And like me and Marty said, oh, when we talked about it months ago, like, uh, we don't want to show up at anyone's house, but I'll fucking show up at your house. That house is seized by L.A. County now. <laughs> we can't even show up at the guy's house because I'm not going to say that hypothetically, I would have showed up and beat the fuck out of this man. Hypothetically. I'm not going to do that. I'm a nice person. I'm not going to do that. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it as a threat. In another universe, and or if I wasn't on the internet, I would just showed up at his house and broke everything he fucking ever owned with fucking 12 people. I'm like, all right. I feel like I was 25 racks, and I'm taking your car, and I'm going to sell it to Rick Ross's old fucking chop shop. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I know I'm like, you're not going to just take the fucking money you owe us. Like, it just snapped in my head like, I never trusted them. I was, right. That's why I went. They gave us, and this is like re really great business stuff because they gave us a contract. I took that shit and completely rewrote their contract and gave it back to them. It's like, nah, bitch, you were none be of this is working. Crazy. This is what we'll do. This is what we'll do, and it puts you in a completely non-exclusive place with us. Whereas if you bring us any money, cool. If not, cool. But. Originally, they were trying to goddamn own the show, basically. They wanted part of the show. They wanted to put their logo on the fucking wall. They wanted to put their logo on the thumbnail and say, right. brought to you by Notorious LLC. You can suck my fucking dick. So, yeah. Anyway, they thought they were playing these two high kids. In all actuality, it's like, yo, I will fuck you up. 
financially <laughs> but, and publicly. Yeah, I mean, not in physically. It's like we're dealing with a goddamn alleged full blown con man. So yeah, it, he's a con of, artist. But anyway, Peter Vince, fuck. We talked about it on Instagram, and dude, I feel bad, but there was like four thousand comments yeah. on these guys' pages mm-hmm. going hard on them, and I never asked for that. But I appreciate you guys yeah. having our fucking backs like that. We're just trying to keep you posting on what the fuck's we going just wanna, on. Yeah, we just want to let you guys know what was happening. We're not going to bring on a sponsor like Stereo and be all on it and actually like it, letting you know we like it. And, and then, then we just get now canceled. Just, that, and we, told, that's, we expressed that to these fools off the top. We talked to Stereo directly. They go, he said they weren't paid. So we gave uh-huh. him 700000 fucking dollars. Remember, he's like, and now it's been, what did he say? Uh, on their end, it's been something on their end. What is it called when people don't respond? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Fuck, they, just, I, they said a, a, like a, yeah. a saying, like, dead air. It's, it's yeah, exactly. Radio silence. Yeah, it's been yeah. complete radio silence from them. I'm like, damn, she just said radio silence. Uh-huh. That's what she yeah. said. That's when I knew, like, oh. So anyway, we call him, and he gives us a whole different story. And I'm like, this bastard. Yeah, that was one of those, we already know the answers. All the yeah, we know the answers. Yep. It's like we knew, we, it's like we watched him rob somebody from yeah. the window and then went out, hey, what'd you but do? But it was creepy because he kept getting on the phone. That's what it was He like kept getting on the phone because it. he thought we were really nice. Yeah. And we are. We're really nice. Super fucking nice. Even on the phone, we didn't go off on him. And yeah. the second we went, well, what if we just do this? Can you just make payments? Well, you know, if you want to get on the lawsuit with me and pay a lawyer and do with all these yeah, fees, yeah. go ahead. Go, oh, he's a liar. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. You're a piece of fucking shit. So shout out to Peter for being a fucking asshole. Um, you, we usually we never talk about this stuff, but we have to fucking talk yeah. about it. We were so hyped, Notor- Fuck you guys. Anyway, they got see their uh, house got seized. Then they're over here fucking doing MGK and Travis Barker fucking music video at the house, but they can't pay us our fucking mm-hmm. money. That's what pisses me yeah. off the most. That shit really bothered me for a long. Really time. pisses me off, and I kind of forgot about it until this morning. I forgot about it after I realized the severity of the whole oh, what scenario he was really doing. And it was way bigger than us. Like. I stopped taking it so personal. Yep. Like, We're not uh, the only people that got fucked. Yeah. Like 30 other podcasts didn't get paid. Or maybe they didn't. Maybe they did. Who, who the fuck knows? Who knows? Maybe they did. Maybe After they didn't. I saw that video with him in the garden, the garden I was, I was like, like, this, this is a shit. different. I'm not even thinking about the fucking podcast anymore. Like, just going to leave it alone. Yeah. Like, you know what? If I ever get our money, it's cool, man. we get our we money. Got, we did so well with stereo that, you know, <laughs> it was it was all right. Yeah, you know, fuck the money, guys. It's not. It's just like, yo, I would love to have that money right now. Of course, super. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you got people starting a fucking business here. We got a warehouse. We got houses. Like, it's that's not cool to do, but not at all. Also, at the same time, you know, we've gotten a lot of good things in our favor. And that's so why we haven't a, really been complaining. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Till now, I'm obviously just bitching. But <laughs> we. You know, we had this chance to check in with the fans on the solo episode and shit. So we got to keep people posted yeah. on what we got going on because we really mean it when we say with these ad partners, like we're not taking on fucking phony, cheesy ads just to take them on. Like most podcasts Stereo's do. Stereo's a great fucking Even company too. that early on in season one when they, we had nothing, we were just hoping to get sponsors. Like really, you know, mm-hmm. we're just, yeah, they just basically walked us for it. And we went the extra mile with that shit and did multiple live streams. Dude, we all did that. so much just because we're like, wow, this brand agency really wants to help us. Mm. Great. And they let us write our own contract. And we're making money from them. And I was just shocked. Like, we're going to get paid. Yeah. Oh my God. We never get paid for shit. So we're yeah. like, oh, it's real. And then there's four or five months later, six months later, like, mm-hmm. you know, this guy's a piece of shit. Yeah. It's okay. It's mm-hmm. okay. Well, eventually, when we get really paid, oh, I'll go sue him. Mm-hmm. I'll go sue him and take his fucking Volvo or whatever he's got. Fucking asshole. <laughs> I hope he's got a new Volvo so I can take that shit. I doubt it. People like that, man. I hope he's got a brand cool. new something so I can go, hey, seizing it. Fuck you. I highly doubt this fool doesn't have anything. He probably owes so many people shit. He's just kind of going house to house. Without, who the fuck knows? But we both got off the phone and went, I'm glad we can tell bullshit. When yeah. We both caught went. Guy's a fucking liar. Yeah, of course. Seconds into the, I called you. I'm just glad that you saw it too. Yeah. Like, it was one of the questions, being able to tell a lie and never get caught or being able to hear every lie you hear. Mm-hmm. And you Love said, that. we already have that. Mm-hmm. I'd rather be able to tell a lie and not get caught because I can already tell the lies right off yeah. the bat. Um, and now that we're experienced too, we were completely inexperienced. We were brand new. They, they, they really did get us. This is a fucking $45 million house. Go up there. They're filming a music video in there. And they're like, yeah, sign, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yeah, all right, we're cool. Not exclusive because we're not dumb. Good thing we didn't. And um, 
It's just like, damn, we did all that work and you guys didn't pay us any of our fucking money, not a dollar. Mm. It's all good. We have many more cool things coming to us, so it's fine. But one day, guys, we'll reach back on this when we go, hey, we want our money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hell yeah. So note that. That's it. So for everyone out there, if you start a new business, even us, we started a new business, got fucked immediately. Mm -hmm. We didn't talk about it. It's been six months and we still didn't talk yeah. about it because we're not just to sit here and complain and use our platform to go, hey, exactly. hey, fuck you. We've we never were really about fucking it. mad behind the scenes. Oh, we were really pissed. going at it. <laughs> fucking pissed. Yeah. We're talking about the clothes today pissed me off because I wanted yeah. and usually I would just not talk about it. Mm -hmm. Just not, not talk about it. But I want to let you guys know, like, yo, I'm a, I'm doing all this shit, all this shit, and I still get, f stuff still happens. Yeah. Real person living yeah, a real shit life. it still happens, guys. So yeah. if you're out there with a clothing company or something and shit fucks up, don't look at it like, fuck, I can't do anything right to get fucked. Like, dude, any so company. Do I. So no yeah, anything. What. It happens, man. It happens. And sometimes it's the shittiest timing, like today. It's two days, brand new site. I already talked about it. Looking at that rack. Like, <laughs> I, I, went, I went through so much trouble for that rack. I know. So much. I went through three different things. The fucking getting here from 300 miles away. Yeah. Then having to pressure wash it and pick off all these people. And my back's been fucked up. So picking mm. them up, I'm like, ah! I know. Every it's piece, horrible. too. Your back is really fucked up. Yeah, every piece, I've been like, ah! Yeah. And I had to do it three times. Get it in, get it out, get it in, and then put it together. <laughs> so and every box three times to get it here, mm. move it, go through it, put it back, move it over there to get the racks, <laughs> then put it on the racks. <laughs> no, you can't even drop these goddamn clothes. <laughs> now <they're for> nothing. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. So, do -do 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 -do. My life is Seinfeld, man. My life is fucking straight Seinfeld. I love it. That's why I have so many story times. That was a story time. Mm. I got expanded on that bitch for fucking 15 minutes. Seriously. Talk about how I met these guys and all the shit and all the dope shit. I hope they come back. I hope they come back and I just say, hey, remember that first time? I can't believe you guys fucked up that bad on the first run. Yeah. This is run number 30 now. Like, that's what I want to say because yeah, yeah. they're so dope. Mm -hmm. The bags are so good. Everything they've made me so far is perfect. But the thing that cost me almost the most money, like, come on, man. Fuck. And I keep forgetting I got so much money in these bags right here. Mm -hmm. Whew, that rack is worth a lot of fucking racks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so it's crazy, dude. I never thought, like, from spending 400 bucks on some shirts and shit, like, uh -huh. racks on racks. Oh, it's so weird. Shit putting like a house payment into a project yeah is so cool like it's very it's flipping at a high fucking level yeah it's like weird. it really is like it's very when, odd but now i'm looking at this and going those big companies got four warehouses this big and this is about just more like mm. wow you guys are crushing yeah. it also you got employees but one day we'll get there mm -hmm. it's just very cool to see it i like seeing this and going i always tell rosie to look back and go we're gonna look back and go remember our little first warehouse yeah i exactly. always say that to Love her that. Like, i we're gonna mm -hmm. look back. That's manifesting. That's how you're supposed to think. Yeah, because I'm going to fucking have that expanded block warehouse. Mm -hmm. And half of it's going to be the weed brand and half of it's going to be push trees. I already see it. Mm. It's going to happen. I'm going to have like 40 fucking, 40 employees. I can mm. see it already. It's making me think I'm the, my family's shirt factory back in Buffalo. Like, same exact shit. That's why I'm like, shit, they did it. If anybody can do it, fucking you can do it. It's work hard. Yeah. It's if you have 10 people, one of them's going to be a good worker. And he's got to find that one. Mm. And I haven't found them yet. I mean, besides obviously us, then that's it. Mm. Everyone else is fucking with me. <laughs> I go through new manufacturers. That's discouraging. Like, 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 you're so deep into this man. clothing shit. We're trying to get the podcast apparel line right. It's like, God damn. First merch guy straight literally took dicks and just ate them. He sucked. He just fucked it off. We're like, yo, we need a hundred. Oh, I'll get to it. Yeah, no, didn't feel real great about it. I'm not. I'm good. I just we just can't wait around for people not to work. Me and you are working. We need enthusiasm. I need people you to be working. That's why Brandon is fucking working. Yeah, Our fucking Brandon. He's basically what Notorious is supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. But he's a 19 year old kid who's he's just fucking getting after cool it. as shit yeah. too. So it makes it even better. Yeah, he's he's hella tight. So that's our guy, but. Other than that, dude, like, mm. fuck, man, it's hard to find people that are willing to and work. I try to tell people when I'm interviewing, I'm like, I don't want to sound douchey, but I've just worked with so many people. Me and Thomas are the best, coolest people you can work for in this business. Oh, when it comes to being <laughs> like, no, nah, bro, just do your job. That's all I ask. We're going to give you everything you need. We're going to be everything. The, I'll never yell at you. I'll we're never give be you a dick. advice. <laughs> I'll yeah. give you, I'll help you in any way I can. I'll never treat you less than or ever. Not. Like, try to block you out of something. Want to hit this? Yeah. 
<laughs> do you want it after you're done, motherfucker? Like, man. bro, like you could be the easiest people to work for. For for because it's not like that coming up, man. It really wasn't. <sighs> Really, it was not like that. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, I know people hit us up with you know, like this. I'll move out there to work. I'm like, bro, I don't need it yet. Yeah. Are you a booking agent? That's what I need. Yeah. It's, uh, these opportunities are coming kind of inc- incrementally. Yeah. Can you do graphics as good as Marty? And you need a job? Maybe in like a week or two or a couple mm-hmm. months. Jurassic Graphics be hiring again. Yeah. That's what we need. We need mm-hmm. another Marty. So while we're here, the other Marty is doing all the clips for the episode we just fucking finished. Mm. Yeah have the episode you know what i mean mm-hmm. like wow do we do a lot of work for yeah. no time mm-hmm. every hour of the day is boom 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 for me and on top you have three fucking kids but season two season two the fans are gonna see the difference my whole life is about to really kick it in i haven't even i feel like i'm just getting started 100%. i really feel like my I just got rex childhood yeah childhood just ended kind yeah of becoming you just got the house I, i've gotten everything i wanted in life so now I got to really just go after it as just like a thank you. Just yeah. give it everything I have. Yeah, dude. That's uh, I'm, I'm not at that stage yet. I'm at the, oh, yeah, I guess it's the exact same stage. Yeah. I just want a billion fucking dollars and then go, I need 10. Not because I want to be rich, just because I can go, all right, everyone's got a house, bro. We're good. Oh, you need to work, start a business? I own 15% of your liquor store. I'll open it. Pay me back. Done. I own mm-hmm. 15% of your Walmart. Pay me back, done. Mm. And everyone in my family can make 85 fucking percent of what they never would have made. Mm-hmm. I'll just get 15 back. I'm like, I'll front you all the money for every fucking thing until it's paid back to be done. Now it's your business. Mm-hmm. How cool. That's how you make change. Yeah, that's how you, because you put one of your fucking family members to open a store. What happens when they become what you were mm-hmm. and helping the next person and the next person in your mm-hmm. family, the next person, and their friend. And that one business employs five fucking people. And those kids are in high school now. He's got a car and he's not tripping off money. And it's it just, we say it all the time. Middle Eastern people got the fucking tech down. Mm-hmm. They come here, they open one store, they open another store with their cutting down. They own that. Oh, yeah. you help me with this? Okay. Yeah. We're bringing more people in from our family from another yeah. country. You're going to help me with the store. Then you're going to own your own store. Then you're going to, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, one of my good friends, a dude that referred us to Painter. I mean, he's balling right now off that model that his parents set up for him. Bill Easter too? Yeah. He's Yemenese. He's now he's they got the right bombing idea, around the world doing whatever he wants. I love it. I love the culture these they got. Businesses back in Buffalo running and it's all it takes, man. Complex liquor, cigarettes, liquor store stuff will never go out of fucking business. Are you ready? Even bums contribute to fucking stores. Mm-hmm. Bums are your best customer. At the liquor, I know it's like, oh, you're feeding. You know what happens? Then don't make this liquor store and let the other guy fucking do it. Mm-hmm. It's just liquor, motherfucker. People drink it. <laughs> yeah. I'll sell it. It's legal. What the mm-hmm. fuck's wrong with you? People, I like liquor, but some people eat too much McDonald's too. They there still- it is. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, liquor, small shit, cigarettes. Yeah. Liquor store style stuff will never go out. Have you ever seen a liquor store out of business? Fucking never. It might have burned down. Yeah. That's the only way a liquor store goes out of business. That's fucking <laughs> it. Or the person dies and their kid takes over and they're a tweaker and they've run it into the ground. I've seen that happen. Other than that, dude, no liquor store's ever gone out of fucking business. M&A Market is still there in Merced. Circle G is still fucking there. If you know where I'm at, I'm not wrong. California liquor is never going anywhere. All right. <laughs> Anyway, start that business. Marty's on the just grew up thing. Mm-hmm, big time. It's You know, it's crazy. I did all my math. I can finally go start trying to look for a house. Mm. I have it. I don't have the whole down payment, but I know you can do first. I'm not trying to do like a big ass loan or anything, I feel. I feel like like next year we're going to be just buying our houses. I don't, I don't know why I feel it. Mm-hmm. Like we're putting in too much. We're putting in so much. Like every Something's going to, it's going to, what sure. we're doing, what we're doing, yeah. we're taking the steps and going, remember when, yo, remember when we used to fucking book our own people, man? Mm-hmm. That shit took days. And now we're working on the grocery. I told you I want to open a grocery store. I'm like, now I'm on the grocery store in this day. Tuesdays are grocery store days because I don't have to do all the editing anymore. I have somebody else to edit now. Mm. And you're like, no, I have a Jurassic Graphics going on. I don't even edit anymore, man. I have mm-hmm. four fucking employees sitting there working all day. Mm-hmm. Great. Perfect. That's the stage I feel like I'm at right now. I'm almost like 
Because is the house 20%? Ten. It's, it's just 10? Mm-hmm. You have to put 10? Yeah. But you don't have to put 20. It depends what kind of deal you got going on. I'm no expert in that shit, but I know what standard is 10. Never mind. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll get the house a little faster than I thought. Oh! Man. This, oh! That's a lot of money. I mean, but it helped, it helped my math. Don't let me that. start fucking getting you excited. I don't hey, know. Hey, do you I'm know any about. like realtors or anybody? <laughs> yeah, I think I might. You might? Oh. You have kids with them? <laughs> yeah, a couple. And you don't know? I don't know because she knows that shit. Listen, it goes so deep. Like the she dude. Said, I'm editing your fucking video yesterday. She's got the salesman coming over with the windows. Now, she's already sold on the windows. She's already looked at the fucking windows. I'm up editing the video. My fucking eyes are bothering me all up in the house. I'm fucking squinting up there. The my contacts the and shit. This is yesterday. Oh. I'm all fucking same shit, though. This dude is like, I'd really like to show your husband. He, like, requests to show me these fucking windows. And I'm like, I come For down. What? They pull me away from the computer. I, I, I'm up against it. I know I got to, like, leave. And shit out to, uh, you know, go get the kids and shit. I'm like, my body language is like, what, what, bro? She's handling this. She's going to buy it. The dude stinks like fucking cologne. He's going through his whole sales pitch. My fucking eyes are now outside. I can barely see what the fuck is going on. And I was just like, all right. I just, I, re- I just walked away. Like, she's, she's handling this, like, cool sales pitch. God damn it. <laughs> you know, where you're like fucking forcing this ear beating of your sales pitch on me bro we're gonna fucking buy these windows we already said we want them <laughs> we're getting the whole house get the fucking windows but he had to was he like an old school guy i thought he has to talk to a guy i maybe that might have maybe been that might have been it we both told him weirdo top, bro she's she knows all this, this stuff i don't know shit about windows i didn't even Dudes are weird he was like you see how your windows that you got got a green tint to them i'm like you know what they do got a fucking green tint. i don't know i didn't even fucking notice that but yeah, <laughs> watch Squid Games, bro. Talking about talking about glass pieces of glass. So I watched that episode last night. Go watch Squid Games. Yeah, fuck that. But you get into shit buying a house you do not expect. Uh, all I mean, I've whined about this every stage on the podcast from not being able to find one to getting in. But it's okay because this is a reoccurring theme of season one. Season one, yeah, Marty yeah. was buying his house. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's significant. Uh, it's, it's it's, the we ended it by the time we end this season. Yeah. Guys, season's coming to an end. Sorry, let me just say that now. We probably only have a couple more episodes in this season. All right? Wow. Cool, man. That's weird. We got through a whole season. So it'll probably be about maybe, you know, we're at 35. Next season will probably look more like 50. And then we'll switch it up again. Wow, man. Yeah. But zooming out at the life of the podcast, zooming out, we're still brand new. For we'll, sure. We'll be we'll be what we are around, like I said, season three, season three and a half. I we'll, think four was, is this going to be. Well, season four of any major comedy is the best season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go watch season four of The Office. Go watch season four of Always Sunny. Love you guys. Go watch season four <laughs> of Always Sunny. Go watch uh-huh. season four of Seinfeld. All fucking gems. Yeah. Every time Rosie goes, what's, what do you, which one do you want? Season four, episode four. I say mm-hmm. it all the time. Season four, episode four is always good on whatever fucking show <laughs> you're watching. If it's comedy, at least. Always. If it's not a show that has to be in plot, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. next week we're yeah, yeah, yeah. on a river. Uh-huh. That shit, season four, episode four, just go for it. <laughs> All right? It's like people say, just put C on the Scantron. Just go season fucking four, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, our season four is going to be great. I can't wait. Shit. I can't fucking wait. It scares me to look that far in the future at this point. But don't. Don't yeah. be scared. Season five. Season five will be on TV. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm talking my ass at this point. Uh-huh. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what's going on at that point. Doing the same thing. Uh-huh. Oh my God. Jimmy Kimmel, bro. Whenever you get bored, just fucking come knock. All right. Just come fucking out to take over your job. As long as they let me smoke. Johnny Carson used to be able to sit there with a cigarette. Uh-huh. So, Ronnie Dangerfield. <laughs> yeah. Yo, and then he just smoked and drank. Why can't I just, you know, mm-hmm. smoke and drink too? The fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, like on late night. Yo, Johnny Carson was good. I watched so many clips. You you fuck with Ronnie Dangerfield? I don't fuck with him. I mean, I'm I'm aware who he is. He gets no respect. I know all that shit. Oh, okay, okay. (laughs) His stand up's really good. Really, he's a funny motherfucker. OG fucking. He's just funny. He's just that guy. He got famous at 55. Mm. He didn't get no movies or nothing. He was famous at 50 fucking five years old. I, I saw that it came up when he 
was still alive when I was a kid, and it popped up on Extra, Extra, that show, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. It'd wow. pop up. I used to watch it, but like, oh, what? Oh, sick, man. <laughs> Acting shit's t- I was always in the movies. Uh-huh. And talks about Ryan Dangerfield. Happy something, something birthday at the end of the show to some and some. Did you know a little fact that he did not, and they talked about how 55, he super got, he finally got famous. He had been doing it for so long, and he mm. finally popped off at 55 or 45. I can't remember. But either way, for all these people out there thinking it's not going to happen, keep fucking pushing at it. Look at it now. Fucking dude in Suicide Squad, Iris Ibra. Mm-hmm. Well, that motherfucker's been in hell of shit for 30 years mm. He was in the episode of Absolutely Fabulous. I don't know if you watched that show. It's one of my favorite fucking shows. Randomly, Absolutely Fabulous is a show about two chicks in England. It's really funny. <laughs> right. One's a fucking, You're really good at not giving out spoilers. I don't. Well, yeah. one is a super bad alcoholic, and she's great, and she doesn't hasn't eaten anything since 1973. Patsy Stone. She just does coke and drinks and smokes, and her friend Eddie. Eddie is a. Uh, like a fashion head mogul fashion. She's well known, but she's like overweight. So she's never like in the circle of being high fashion people, even though she runs one of the biggest fucking spot magazines, I think. Mm, okay. It's just really funny. My mom put me on when I was a kid. <laughs> it's really good. It fucking ends with David Bowie. Like it's just all, it just reminds me of being a kid. A lot of the episodes end with fucking little David Bowie riff. I just fuck with it. Don't know why I brought that up. Anyway, I have no idea why I brought this. Is this a diva? Oh, phone out here. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Okay. We got off topic. Notorious fucks. Done. Wrap that up. Ready, guys? I don't think I've ever told the story. Marty says he's never heard this. This isn't season one story time. Mm-hmm. It's a long time before I ever met you. Mm-hmm. Um, you ready? My notes just say crazy Asian gangster party. <laughs> you ever seen that show that came out called Crazy Rich Asians? Uh-huh. This is my version. Yeah. All right. Interpreted by Yola. Yeah. It's called Crazy Asian Gangster Party. If you watch season one story time and a lot of people during the college episode kept saying, yo, I've heard that story before. You fucked up. Guys, 90% of the stories I talk about on this show are from a story time somewhere. So if you heard it before, it's probably because you've been watching for a long time. But the reason I talk about it is I can go way more in depth because there's no editing. There's no, hey, you got that black box. Hey, yeah. like that. <laughs> Good shit. Smell proof, not stab proof. I did stab through it. Uh-huh. What you guys saw on the video, it went through one when in the, the back. Cop was going past well, I mean, it didn't go all the way through, but it went into the box. Yeah, when that cop was wrong by, I had a <laughs> buck knife, fucking Rambo knife. <laughs> um,. Oh, man, there was something I was going to talk about, and I can't remember anymore. I had it, like, right here, and now it's gone. Fuck. Yeah. Anyway, Crazy Asian Gangster Party. Here we go. Um, I've never talked you, I've never talked about this. For sure, ecstasy parties and shit. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't talked about ecstasy on the show yet. We've had one, one Asian gangster mention. Which one was that? When we talked about that, I didn't realize there was Asian gangsters. And, and this is not you have not heard uh, this story uh, guys i promise from now on i'll never ask have i told this before my goal for this week is to go through every single fucking podcast skim it write down every story i've talked about so i never have to ask that again because i feel like it's a little unprofessional of me <laughs> to ask did i do this yet <laughs> sorry like I, I just talk a lot all right I talk a lot i have three different shows we do this we do the fucking story time we do adventures of yola shit i go on lives i don't know what i talked about on where okay like Lil Wayne, I have to Google my lyrics to make sure I didn't say it already. Mm. That's what I have to do. I have to go through my own shit. Every time with this mm-hmm. shit, because I lived through it, so I know I said it. You guys, remember before I ever started talking on camera, I was telling these stories to my homies the same mm-hmm. way. Like, you bitch, just wait till I f- watch this, and then the bitch came outside and I fell on her, like shit, like that. So that's why I can't remember everything. Ready, go. Crazy Asian gangster party. That's my notes. Ready? But, yeah, you just touched on the next fucking one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How oh, crazy. That was six years ago today. That happened. Um, Guys, here we go. What are we at? 135? 36. 52. Fuck no. <laughs> no, it's not. Is it really? 152. Yeah. We're just at 120. I don't fucking know. 
Got into that Rodney Dangerfield shot, though. One day we're going to hit an hour and a half, man. One day we're going <laughs> to fucking do it. I promise you guys. I really thought today was a day because I was so tired. And my back is uh-huh. pretty much on fire. Like right now, it just hurts. So I was like, yeah, it's an hour and a half so I can go home and you know knock some shit out. Uh-huh. Here we go. Crazy Asian, Asian gangster, gangster party. party. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Merced, predominantly Mexican, eh, 60% Mexican, 30% different types of like ethnicities, Asian. I don't know how to say it. Asian ethnicities. Oh, I'm going to fuck up and I say it wrong. I had a lot of homies from Laos, Laotian Fools, uh, uh, Thai, Thai Cambodian. Mong was the biggest one. Mong was the biggest. I don't know what that is. Mong is H-M-O-N-G. It's, I don't know where they're from. I'm sorry, bro. I don't know what ethnicity that is, but I know like 60% of my homies at school were all Mong. <laughs> and they all had like close to the same last name. Like X's and A, X's and J's and shit, if I remember correctly. But I grew up with a lot of, uh, you just typed in Hmong in the first thing. Hmong people. Yeah. Fucking Wikipedia. I hope they put the right information. <laughs> all right? <laughs> Fucking Wikipedia is the first thing that pops up. That's bullshit. It should be something legitimate. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, matter of fact, I'm going to go change this shit. <laughs> <laughs> like Thomas's homies. Yeah. Just put under Hmong yeah. people. Hmong people. Yeah. So I grew up with a lot of um, Asian homies, a lot, a lot of Asian homies and Mexican homies and shit. Just, you know, the town's predominantly that. So that's the people you chill with. That's where I grew up. So are you ready? I am now in 11th grade. Got the the hair, the long hair, selling drugs already. Um, I almost said his name. I almost fucking blew someone's cover. One of my Asian gangster homies uh, sells pills. The guy that I talked about in the mushroom story time when I talked about the recent one, the mushroom trip part two or whatever. I can't remember what I called it, but magic mushrooms. That one, the homie that dropped off the pills, this is the same kid. Um, He sold me some ecstasy, triple stacks. I paid like fucking, it was like 15 bucks for a pill. I went, damn, fuck, give me it. And I bought it. Me and Ryan, you guys heard from Ryan Last time I talked to Ryan, he sleeps outside. Nah, he's all fucked up. He's on drugs. But I did hear recently that he went to rehab, which makes me very happy. I heard that he's in rehab and trying. Nice. So I'm good. Also, which is unreal. Damn, almost fucking choked up. Joe is in rehab mm. and has a car. Damn. Nice. Yeah. Like he's not living outside anymore, which is really cool. Last I heard. It's just weird. I never. I thought Joe was going to be dead. I really thought he was going to die this year. Like, I, I felt it like his mom going to call me like, fuck, man. But no, he went to rehab. Mm. Oh, shit. Yeah. I don't even want to get my hopes up. We'll just say, like, Joe's not Joe's good. He's doing better. So that's really good. And uh, this is the time where me and Ryan were doing ecstasy all day. Anytime we could, we'd do ecstasy and go to a party. Because it was fun. All right? So me and Ryan... Do not chill often, just me and him. It's always a group of friends. For some reason, this Friday night, we always had like 12 kids at Ryan's, and every single person had something to do. They all went somewhere else, which was rare as fuck, right? Super rare. We always hang out every fucking weekend. We're at Nathan's house or Ryan's house. So it's just me and Ryan Huff. And this motherfucker, tall white kid, looks just like Tom Petty. Just like Tom. When I first met him, I go, bro, you know like Tom Petty? Who is that? People keep fucking telling me that. He goes, the skater Tom Petty? No, not Tom Penny. Not the skater. Tom Petty. The guy you look like, asshole. <laughs> Tom Petty, the heartbreak. All right, never mind. Anyway. Anyway, that's Ryan. And me and him were like, all right, I have two pills. He's like, I'm going to take both of mine. I'm going to take both of mine with you. Fuck yeah. And I took them both triple stack, so I am fucking gone. I, I always chewed him up. I don't know why. I was just like. The taste of oh, it was meth in there, I think. <laughs> Chewing up ecstasy pills always hits me like in the back of my tongue. Ugh. Better than the drip. Anyway. Chewing up ecstasy, it gets stuck in my teeth like sweet tarts and chocolate. <laughs> and every time you rub your teeth on the tongue, the grooves of your teeth still have the power in that you taste it. It's just Ugh, I love drugs. <laughs> oh, I don't do it anymore, but God, I love drugs so much. And uh, ugh, my back just got all weird. 
I chewed him up. And me and Ryan walked. All right. We walked. No, no, no. Sorry. We got dropped off at a party. That's right. Ryan said, I heard about a party. Go, Ooh, what party is it? Because people get shot in the face in Merced. I don't want to go to those parties. <laughs> what street? Oh, it's on Green Street. I go, uh, Green and what? 27th. Go, All right, let's go. It's an okay neighborhood. It's not as bad. as a lot of old people. Let's run it. Let's go. Got dropped off. And I remember as we're walking up, as we're walking up, dude, I have my Mad Dog 2020s. Two blue raspberry, one in each pocket. I'm walking up. Ryan's got his drink in his pocket. We're walking up, and some Mexican girls outside fucking crying hard as fuck. And one of her friends is like trying to calm her down. And we're walking to the door. She goes, Who the fuck are you guys, huh? Who the fuck brought you guys? And we're like, Whoa. Walk in up to the door and go, Whoa, bro. This is a bad sign. Maybe she's just drunk and got kicked out. I don't know. Maybe she had a fight. I don't know what's going on. But I saw a Mexican girl. I'm expecting more Mexican people. And I'm not saying I need to be around Mexican people to feel safe. I just didn't know it was a... My title says a lot. You guys ever seen Harold and Kumar when they have to stop to buy weed from the hippie? Or no, when they have to stop at the school and go by that party or something... And Bobby Lee's there. He's like, oh, hello, hello. Uh, thank you. Tell me about business. Remember when they stop like that and it's like only Asian kids having a party and they're fucking living it up? This is not one of those. You know, how they were all super nice with like button ups and doing and just like smoking weed, like having fun. Not those kind of Asian guys. This Asian party I walked in was straight true blue kids. True blue is a blue as a gang in Merced. I don't know what they were, MOD or true blue kids. But I walked in. I knocked on the door. Super pretty Asian girl. I'm like, oh, this party's cool. Took a step in, door closed behind me, and I went, oh, fuck. Like, I literally, like, got my stuff, and I was walking, and as I walked in, it went, <gasps> and the door closed behind me, the girl walked away, and I went, oh, we're not going to just bolt out the door, but I just go, Forrest Gump, sorry, I ruined y'all's Black Panther <laughs> party. That's how I felt, went, Fuck. I don't, I don't know any Mong or Laotian. <laughs> Fuck. I walked in to a sea of blue flannels and blue rags. I mean, I walked into Asian MOD city. I have the big, tall, pretty white kid with me. And a little short fucking Mexican with long hair. And I just remember like, oh my fucking God. Sorry for everybody driving. I'm just trying to imagine everything again. Like, I was so fucking just, bro, I knew I was going to get shot. I didn't think it was going to be like this. And then I thought, no, they're Asian gangsters. They're going to slice my ass. They're not going to shoot me. They're going to stab me to death. It's like the fucking music turned off when I walked in. It's what it felt. It's what it felt, man. I walked in and went, huh? Like, you can hear me go, huh? Because there was no more music. It's like the music took a break and was going to the next song right when I walked in. So, like, people were just. And when I walked in, you heard the door close. And about 12 to 15 fucking hard-ass looking gangbangers just. Staring at me, Ryan. I could feel Ryan looking at me. And I just went like that. Yo, Ryan. I just like. Yo, I don't know what's going on. I was, and I told him, like, yo, I don't know what's going on right now, but. And I don't remember what else I said to him. Because I remember I was like, fuck, dude, they're, they're staring, right? Oh, shit. Don't run. <laughs> like, don't run. And then they're going to be like, so what the fuck do you want to be in here for? Fucking get those. Well, what was the point? Why'd you? It was a gangbanger affiliation party. Someone probably got jumped the fuck in that night. I walked into, and it was in the nice, it was in the okay neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But you know someone's parents went out of town, this fucking girl had everybody over. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. I walk in, these fools are all just holding fucking 40s or bottles, just looking. Asian gangsters love Hennessy to the max. I don't oh, know if anybody crazy. knows okay. that. Love, there's hella Hennessy everywhere. All right, at least the guys I met. 
<laughs> At least the only <laughs> groups of gang Asian gangbangers I meet and drink fucking Hennessy. Like even the fools I know now, out out down, I won't say where, but even those crazy motherfuckers, it's now it's 1942, but it was just bottles and bottles and bottles of fucking Hennessy when I first met him. Anyway, they're holding their bottles, whatever they're holding, they're just I remember the fool with the fucking straight build hat. I'm like, ooh, that fool's 220. That fool is fucking Bolo Young from Bruce Lee. Like, he's gonna, he's the one to watch. Oh, fuck. And I'm just thinking, like, I know Ryan can fight. I can fight too. But I don't want to get stabbed. That's all I could think. Like, I want to get stabbed up in my hips and my right. I'm done. I don't want this. And all these fools are like, just stay. I know this is a long drag, but bro, I'm standing there. I can, I can remember the way the house was shaped. The hallway's right here. There's a wall right in front of me. So I can't see everyone in the fucking living room. Kitchen's right here. Refrigerator's hooked over here and to the right. I don't know what it was, but there was a mirror right here. You go right there. There's one step down to the living room where most of the dudes were, but some of them were in the kitchen, so there was still light. So when I see them in the kitchen, it's like linoleum, linoleum with that fucking like metal edge. One of those kind of kitchens. One step down goes to the carpet, like a brick fireplace. Just, you know, like a smaller, like two to three bedroom house. So I'm, I'm just explaining it. And out right straight at the living room was a sliding glass door. And I saw like people smoking and shit. But I couldn't see tucked to the right. So somebody could have been on the other side of the wall. And I didn't know. And it got me like, oh, fuck. I can't even, I don't want to do this. Oh, we're good? I don't want to like, I don't want these guys to be like, oh, this fool's scared. Mm. And I also don't want them to go like, hey, this point's scared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was in the no win situation <laughs> So all these guys are staring at me And I could feel Ryan's like Fuck I can hear it in his like Just breath or presence I can feel his energy like Bro Thomas we gotta get the fuck out of here I can hear him But I just went Yo I don't know what's going on right now And I, I don't remember what else I said Like I said And these fools are staring at us And I just hear this is like 15 seconds. These guys are just looking at us. And I don't want to like, sup, fool. But I also don't want to. <gasps> I'm just like, fuck, man. What do I do? Fuck. And I have about 15 seconds in. I've never told you a story, huh? I just hear, Thomas? Question mark? Basically, I hear Thomas? And I go, yeah. I don't, I just a bunch of dudes. I don't know who's saying this shit. Like in Russia, which one of y'all kicked me? Yeah. That's how I felt like, who said this shit? Somebody knows my name, who who do I know here? Because I didn't see anybody talking. I'm like, who said that? I don't want to stare at these fools in the fucking eyes. So I'm like, oh, yo, I know it came from like over there. And I just see some fool like a knight in, in, in to the light. He just splits these fucking sea of blue rags. He goes, what's up? I won't say his name. It's a fucking kid I knew from Sheehy. I used to play basketball with every fucking day. Mm. He's a gang, he chills with gangbangers now. I didn't know that. I hadn't seen him since the fucking fourth grade. Mm -hmm. He just goes, Thomas? Opens and I go, and I say his, I didn't say his name. I, mean, I know his name, but I'm not going to say it. And I say, I'm like, yo! And I just go to shake his hand. Remember, we're across the kitchen, so he has to he has to come through to see if dudes he knows and be uh -huh. like, no, it's cool, it's cool. But he goes, Thomas? And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And I go, I haven't seen you since fourth fucking grade. I'm like, we were friends. Mm -hmm. We used to hang out and during recess, like you want to play basketball? Let's check out a basketball. Let's get, let's get one. Give our, you know what I mean? How you check one out? I'm in this class. Mm -hmm. Write your name. Take a ball. And me and him were all day just trying to fucking do tricks. And I'm talking to him for five seconds, and I hear another person, Thomas. And another dude comes up, and it's the dude they used to chill with in sixth grade that we made the fake fucking fighting routine. We were just fucking around in PE every day. We would learn like five more new things. So by the end of the school, like, like three months in. We had like a four minute fucking fake fighting routine we would do at full fucking force and never really hit each other. Uh -huh. But it was on some baller Bruce Lee. We both love Bruce Lee. And we fucking, there were, he would high kick. And then it's like, all right, here. And then I'm going to duck because you're going to kick. All right, uh -huh. that's one, two, three, four. And we had like 16, 18 steps. Damn. We got far, but we did that full force. It looked like we were really fighting. Anyway, that motherfucker <laughs> walks out of the crowd. I haven't seen him since sixth fucking grade. Mm -hmm. He used to have my number. He used to stand on your number for PE. Stand in your spot for PE. Line up. Do your stretches. He was a guy behind me. Mm. Yeah. He was a guy right behind me. And um, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And I say hi to him. And then one of the gangbanger fools goes, Thomas. 
I'm like, I look at it. I wasn't staring at their faces. Yeah. I look at it and I, I'm like, oh my God. And I realized where I know him. I was like, I was a little kid. He went to Sheehy with me. He was a little fat kid. Just like me. But I remember him like, oh, bro. Oh my. And nobody, everybody went back to what they're doing. But as soon as I said hi to the first dude, they were yeah. still loud. I'm like, nah, who is this for? Uh -huh. Second guy, I wasn't even looking at them. I was so shocked. I'm like, yo. Do you remember the routine, motherfucker? Because <laughs> I don't. I don't remember the steps. Uh -huh. It's not what I asked, but I was thinking yeah, like, yeah. whoa. And then the third dude, I met him in Sheehy. I knew him in Sheehy too. He played basketball with us and we played marbles. Remember I told you with uh, Rick Rick Ross? I'm like, marbles, mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those are the kids I play marbles with. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, man. I was like, yeah. I knew some Asian kids you used to play marbles with too. All the Asian kids made were hella good. Those are the kids I was talking uh -huh. about during that episode. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, there's no fucking way. Everybody just chills. Once I talked to the third dude, because he was one of the gang, hard-looking gangbanger fools with a flag, a rag hanging out of his mm -hmm. pocket. Fucking white Cortezes, blue rag, blue flannel, mm -hmm. fucking straight build, fucking with the green underneath the cap, those old cheesy, easy E hats, not cheesy, yeah, those yeah. The cheap easy E hats where he used to rock like the with no logo. Mm -hmm. Generic GTA gangster. Mm. That's what he looked like. And he knew me, and I knew him. I'm like, yo, this is fucking crazy. And then he's like, yo, hold up. And he goes and gets somebody else, and it's the other fucking fool I used to play marbles with, too. Mm. I haven't seen these kids since I was... Because remember, I told you I was in the gifted classes. Mm -hmm. I had to go across fucking town. Mm. I had to go to the other school. Remember, I told you I had to leave school? Mm -hmm. I didn't see those kids no more. Mm. What oh, a man. trip, man. Like, what a trip. They're still in remedial fucking English and shit. No, we were all in the gifted <laughs> classes. Oh, they weren't. You're right. Yeah. You jerk. <laughs> no, same Ryan. Remedial classes. This is the same Ryan. Uh -huh. And uh, so I got saved and I just stayed. So it's like 20 minutes in and we're just taking shots. Now I'm chill. Mm. Now all these fools are like, all right, it's cool. So now we're all just shoot, taking shots. They're playing pong, beer pong. I'm like, yo, I'm chilling with these crazy gangbanger motherfuckers. All right, cool. Fuck it. I know these fool. I know these four guys. We're good, right? Like, I'm okay. All right, cool. And uh, Ryan's on ecstasy. Scared the shit out of me. So it's about 30 minutes later, guys. And remember, Ryan's on ecstasy. A lot of it. So am I. But I'm also like a bigger fat kid. And also I handle drugs. Thanks, mom. Acid brain. I handle drugs well. Two, those triple stacks hit me hard. But I wasn't like jaw going nothing like that ryan was geeking he was on one remember merced pills are cut with meth they're never full mdma ecstasy it's never that so ryan's on one and i can see it in his face like he is on one he is dancing with this really pretty asian girl he's dancing with her and i'm like damn ryan's getting aggressive he's like fucking going <laughs> at it right mac dre had just died and the wave was hard in merced for ecstasy Everybody wanted thizz, thizzles, ecstasy, euros, triples. And uh, I'm sitting there with my drinks and Elizal, randomly, Elizal, which doesn't live far. Elizal has been many story times. He just pops up out of nowhere. And Elizal's on ecstasy too. And he's drunk as fuck. And he's just in the party out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, how do you awesome one of my homies? I live down the street. I, go, I know you live down the street. That's why I came here. I thought it was a cool place. Like, oh, Elizal is over there. It's not a bad neighborhood. So I walk into this place and out of nowhere because I'm fucked up. Eliza's just there. I'm like, oh, this is tight. So it's only like 30 minutes in, right? Uh -huh. I'm in the dark, like, living room where everybody's, like, chilling or dancing. It's like, it's a house party. Kitchen's lit up where everybody's taking shots. But you can see the kitchen from the living room. Uh -huh. So Ryan dancing with the Asian girl, aggressive. And then a bunch of people. I'm talking to one of the dudes that I knew from playing Marvels. And, you know, he goes back with his homies. And I'm just sitting there at that point. We got the okay to, like, just be there. Mm-hmm. I was just coming to a fucking house party. That's what you did in high school. That's what you do in high school. You just show up at the fucking house party. That's all you're supposed to do. That nobody gives out flyers. This isn't fucking <laughs> every ten things I hate about you yeah. and shit. Like this doesn't. There's no flyers unless your parents have expendable fucking income. All right, not over here. Anyway, Eliza's just randomly there. He's fucked fucked up. He might have been there the whole time. I just didn't know. But it was a dark living room, remember I said? Mm -hmm. But you could see the porch light in the back on where people were smoking too. So it's like, remember that. Like, door, lit up kitchen. Dark ass living room, lit up porch, mm -hmm. people smoking. 
So I go outside and I have a blunt. I was still smoking blunts. I have a blunt. I'm selling weed at the time. I have a blunt. I light the blunt up. I come outside and the pretty ass Asian girl that Brian was talking to, she's on ecstasy too. And she comes out and I can see like, damn, your eyes are black. And she's just glistening, sweaty, nose ring. I remember I was like, damn, this girl's hella pretty. This is, go, oh, good job, Brian. Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn, you're sweaty. She got close to me. She was talking. I was like, oh, my God, please back up, girl. You are dripping sweat. I Get away from me. That's all I thought. Like, oh, I could do this to you. Like, fuck, back up. You were dancing hard in there with that fucking ecstasy-ridden white kid. Uh-huh. And she starts talking. She's like, yo, yo, what's your name? I'm like, the way she was talking, I'm like, bitch, aren't you, like, dancing on my homie? Why are you talking to me like that? And she's talking, so where are you from? I'm like, oh, okay, cool. She's kind of, she's in a house full of gangbangers. She's not a preppy bitch. She's uh-huh. a, she's kind of down. You can see it, like, the way she's talking. I'm like, oh, I know your type. <laughs> not for me. Because uh-huh. <laughs> your brother is probably in there. And uh, she goes, you got to tell your homie to chill out. And I go, oh, I know. Sorry, he's all fucked up. He's dancing hard. She goes, no, no, no. Like, it's cool, but, like, he's, like, getting too, like, aggressive. I go, oh, my bad. He's like, yeah, you're like, <laughs> Yo, no matter what, I've told the story many times. I can't get through it without. <laughs> sorry. She's she's too upset. He's so aggressive. I go, I know, I'm sorry. She goes, yeah. He keeps pushing his boner in my back. <laughs> right? It's like 6'3. This is a little short Asian girl. He's like all on drugs. He's like, yeah, he keeps pushing his boner into my back. He has to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's inside jaw going in circles doesn't realize that he's just dry humping this girl in front of fucking hillside trace a from training day <laughs> the way she said it cause she's caught like he, when your parents don't speak English like a lot of Mexican fools you still have that accent with Mexican people you know what I'm talking about you still have like that accent cause you speak Spanish daily you I don't know I, I see that a lot same with Asian people when they're when they're mm-hmm. when they're the first like American born people like they s- translate for their parents you can hear like their accent still kind of mm-hmm. like there's a lot of my homies you, you, you hear it. everyone everyone that doesn't speak English first still has the accent somewhat the way she, he's popping his boner in my back the way she said it just made me like bro shut the fuck up I want to laugh in your face and I was like. Oh, yeah, I'll tell him to chill. Like, yeah, I know. I was like, okay. She's like, oh, can I hit that? I'm like, oh. Oh, I don't know you. <laughs> how many boners you got? Yeah, how many out? boners got shoved in your face? <laughs> and then she started hitting on me, bro. Right then and there. Like, so what's up, man? Like, oh, like, where are you from? Like, wow, well, you want to do some shit? And my whole time, like, I'm oh, sorry, but. Your profuse sweating has got me. Like, I got to get the fuck away from you. I don't even want to be. I th- I have to oh. I was on drugs. I'm over uh-huh. here just analyzing it. Like, uh-huh. oh, <laughs> no, no, get away from me. Anyway, she's talking to me. I'm like, yo, I'm going to be inside. And I just cut it off, let her keep like, like a little less than half the blood. I'm like, finish this. I'll be right back. I'm going to get Ryan. I just lie. I'm like going back inside. It's two mm-hmm. steps away. I'm going back inside. I want nothing to do with it. I don't know. I'm getting involved with this fucking, she was hella pretty, but no gangster families for me. Yeah. And I go in and I'm like, yo, Ryan, what's up? I'm like, yo, that girl straight up told me that you got to chill. <laughs> he goes, what? What I do? I told him what she said. He goes, "Oh my bad." And he was like embarrassed. Oh my my bad. He like looked down. I'm like this. It's loud. It's a house party. I'm in his ear. She said she he pushed your your boner in her back. <laughs> oh oh my my bad my bad. And the way he said, it, I'm like yo, this is amazing. We stayed there for I can't remember how long. And then we walked. I don't remember. <laughs> We might, we probably had to have walked back to Ryan's. I don't. There's no way we drove. For some reason, I feel like we drove. But if I walked up straight to the house, there's no way we would have parked back there. I think we fucking drove. No, I you guys. For one of the first times, I can't fully remember. If I can't remember clearly, I'm not gonna say it's definite. Mm-hmm. We got we drove. We got dropped off. But when we left, I don't. I I could have swore we drunkenly walked home. And I remember walking down McKee. But that could have been any night. Wow, it's a story time first. I can't be definite. <laughs> I'm pretty positive we walked the fuck home. 
But that was it. Crazy Asian yeah. Gangster Party. I, I hope was, you guys fucking walked home. I was scared. I, I don't I don't ever get in the car with people drink and drive, but yeah. I would remember that. Yeah. I've only done it once. I've only drove a little buzzed once. And I remember driving going, this is fucking stupid. It wasn't fucked up, but I remember like, this is dumb. Why are you doing this, bro? This <sighs> Off of Green Street. Mm. Six years later after that, when I was like 22, uh, off of Green Street, mm. I drove a little bit buzzed for my homie Anthony's birthday uh-huh. back to my house in Merced. Huh, weird. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Crazy Asian Gangster Party, nothing to do with Crazy Rich Asians, the fucking show. Um, quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. But the reason I bring it up, because I've been around so many of the gangs, MOD, the Dead End Park was the MOD land when I was a kid. I never walked through there. All the fools with long, no hair on the side, long ass fucking hair, wearing all the blue. The Asian fools that wear really, really clean white tees do not fucking go near them. Those are the guys that will kill you. Mm. Always. I always say it like, yo, the scariest fucking gangsters ever are Asian fools, Asian fools because they will come 35 deep and kill you. So will Mexicans. But like, bro, I, I can talk. Like, if you don't like, I don't know what it is. It's like those fools are scary as fuck. Mm-hmm. They're serious. At least the ones that were said, they're fucking serious. And they will shoot. You. Fucking Rosie's sister got shot in the fucking head by one of these guys. Damn. She lived through it. But my cousin Adrian, some crazy shit happened. Their, their whole fucking car got shot up. And Rosie's sister got shot in the fucking head. Jesus. I remember when that shit happened. I was with my Uncle John. I was smoking weed with him. And we went back into his living room off 24th Street, 21st Street. And then Rosie just called me. I just hear screaming. And then all this shit. It was a long story. But it was crazy Asians. Crazy Asian fucking game bangers. Mm-hmm. People are probably out there. Is this guy racist? I'm like, no, I'm saying. I would have said crazy Mexicans. Yeah, we've touched on all different Crazy black guys. Bangers, yeah. I would have said the same fucking shit. It's just these guys are crazy. They just saw my, my cousin Adrian has a red. Red or blue. I can't remember. It was a red or blue Honda. Little Honda. Like little racer one. Mm-hmm. Bro, they just they left Burger King. He saw them in the fucking in the store. In the restaurant, they got their food, walked out. He said they went down the street, got to the stop sign. These fools fucking rolled up and sprayed their entire fucking car. For nothing. They didn't do shit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Rosie said got fucking shot in the head, bro. Jesus Christ. It's crazy. My cousin didn't get shot though. But I remember I remember that that night was fucking insane. Everything about that night was crazy. Whew, it was a trip. Jesus wild, Christ. wild times. Um, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I don't think you get that in a lot of cities in America. She got shot in the head for real. Mm-hmm. I got shot in the head with a homemade gun. Mm-hmm. Have we talked? We haven't talked about that on here. Yeah, or we have. There we go. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that hurt. I wonder how bad that hurt. Ugh. Anyway, dangerous, dangerous games. Trying to live your life. <laughs> Dangerous, you know, just living around pieces of shit. Uh, seriously. I don't mind gangbangers as long as they shoot each other. Mm-hmm. Just don't shoot people that have nothing to do with anything. Because then it's like, bro, how is this fair? It's a fair game at that point. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, I got to be careful for everybody. It's the reason I don't take your fuck with your money. Because yeah. I don't want any part of what you do. Mm-hmm. If I fuck with your money, then shoot at me. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it pisses me the fuck off. I um, should. How long are we in? I'm going to say 210. Yeah, right around there. 20. Fuck. All right. Pretty fair. <laughs> this first couple episodes, you were 152. <laughs> I was on it, huh? Yeah. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> These last two, three episodes, uh, I've been fucked. <laughs> you know what it's been? We've been starting it, and I've been fucking up the intro. Earlier today, the first intro we did today, as I went, what's a fucking plane flo- flies mm-hmm. over loud yeah. as shit? We got to get that sealed. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? Doesn't matter. We're yeah. Of doesn't course. matter anymore. Yeah. We're fucking moving, man. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna start pumping in the plane sound effects, the train, just to keep it uh, a reminder. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> um, yeah, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. It's another two hours. It's fucking another day. It's past midnight now. We've been here for twelve fucking hours mm-hmm. painting and doing everything. Oh yeah. All right. I'm with it. I love it. Fuck yeah. Fucking love it. Tomorrow I'm going to get up. Tomorrow I'm filming the duct tape challenge. Uh-oh. Part three. <laughs> Fuck. Except this the time. Trilogy. The trilogy. Except this time. 
I know what my mistakes were. <laughs> <laughs> I have to eat and drink something first. Okay. That's what I'm going to do today. Uh-huh. I'm going to eat and drink something first. All right. <laughs> and I'm going to kill two fucking grand pods on my hands. Edward 40 hands. We duct tape 40s to your hands and drink them. I do it with vape pens. And I smoke them until they're gone. And tomorrow I'm going to Studio Motors. And, uh, oh, you know what? Let me not talk about it. This video will be out before the Duct Tape Challenge video. Duct Tape Challenge video comes out next Thursday. Mm. Tomorrow comes out story time. So this is the plan, guys. Every Monday is the podcast. We try to do every single Monday at 5. I think, just throwing it out there, I think we should start doing it slightly earlier because of Monday Night Football. I just realized that too. Yeah. Monday yeah. Night Football's on, and so, dude, I want to watch the game. Yeah, you, you gotta do something. <laughs> I want to watch yeah. the yeah. game. I don't want to be competing with that either. I just realized that too. That too. I just sometimes like, yo, you guys let us know. What do you want? <laughs> yeah, what do you guys want? What do you guys want? We just adjust for Monday Night Football because you know it does fuck up people's timing. Some people don't want to watch. The podcast they can watch after and just watch Monday Night Football. I totally get it. Yeah. I agree with you. We'll figure that we'll out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about it the other day. Like, yeah. oof. Monday Night Football's on. I just, Fuck. I was like, Thursday Night Football is fucking weird. I'm like, we're competing with Monday Night fucking football let's, on the let's, premieres. Let's, 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 <laughs> I look back and go, so, uh, <laughs> I also have the football game on when I'm all right. It's in the background. I'm listening, but we're sitting there typing. It's it's impossible to really watch the game. Yeah, just typing the whole time. But Monday, every Monday is a new episode. All right, every Monday is a new ep- new episode. Sunday night at midnight. So basically, right when it turns Monday, audio's up. Usually, yeah. Usually we're trying, but after the house is done, bro, we're yeah, on yeah, fucking point. Because so, before we went into the house, we were like two days ahead. Yeah, three days ahead of the podcast, bro. You beautiful. have so much to do. So you're building a house, so it's it's a given. So Sunday night at midnight, basically Monday morning at 12 a.m., audio goes out. So if you're driving to work, for if you're listening right now and you're driving to work, remember you do not have to wait for the premiere. You can go with Spotify, po- Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all the all the podcast platforms. We're on all of them. We're on like fucking 15 of them. You can listen to the episode on your drive to work. You don't have to wait. You do not have to wait till the uh, episode premieres on YouTube. Episode will always premiere YouTube later because I'm not posting at fucking seven in the morning. Mm-hmm. The fuck? No, I want to post when people are alive and awake and shit, right? Not just on their way to work. So Monday is the podcast. This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to have it to where every single month, Monday, no matter what podcast is there, every Thursday, Dope is Yola channel. Every single Thursday from now on is my posting day. I want to start posting every single Thursday because when you are at school and you get off on a Thursday, isn't it fucking awesome? Because you know you just got to go to sleep, wake up one more time, <laughs> go to school. Every period is like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Bitch, I'll deal with it Monday. That's how I feel every single Thursday night. So that's why I want to give people the feeling of like, ooh, Thursday I'm off of school, I'm off of work, new video. Nice. And then lead your ass into fucking Friday, have a good mm, weekend. That's nice. how, I and Monday that. sucks dick sometimes for people, so that's mm. why we post the podcast on Monday. I see people react to that so Yeah, because sometimes like, yo, I need to start my fucking week off, right? And mm. that's why we do it Monday. Thursday is for me, because I always think of like, Thursday nights were the shit. Mm-hmm. Friday morning, I don't give a fuck, I'm tired, wake up, I don't give a shit, I'm going to sleep when I get home. Mm-hmm. I never did. But, you know, yeah. I like to think that I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I did that shit this morning. I uh-huh. did that this fucking morning. I had to be up in like six, seven fucking hours before yeah. this video. But uh, here we go. Every Thursday, Dope is Yola video. Story time comes out tomorrow. I'm really stoked about this one. High school part two. Mm-hmm. Um, story time. I mean, Thursday, Dope is Yola videos, guys, right? And every Friday, this is my new goal, Adventures of Yola video. Mm. Adventures of Yola channel every Friday because I'm gonna edit. God damn. I'm gonna edit on Monday and Tuesday mm. before the podcast starts. I'll have yeah. Monday, Tuesday to edit. Throw it to you Tuesday. The Adventures of Yola channels, the the edits aren't crazy yet. Mm-hmm. It gives you what Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, correct? And the f- episode I film, I my I film my film days for Dope is Yola is Thursday. So why am I talking about the fucking schedule on here? I'm I'm done. Sorry, oh, I'm no, over here just, I'm letting just the fans know what, it out. Yeah, no, this is good. 
Yeah. Bro, we're not on FaceTime. I got to stop <laughs> fucking thinking like we're on FaceTime. I'm sorry, guys. Fuck. Sorry. Right. You're, you're going to be releasing the Dope Zola videos on a more regular Every schedule. Thursday, Dope yeah. Zola video. Every Monday is the Dope Usual podcast. Every yeah. Friday, hopefully, I'm trying right now. The Adventures of Yola. Yeah, it's... If I film on Friday or I yeah. film on Monday and I get it to you Tuesday, yeah. thir- Wednesday, Thursday, Friday morning. Schedule is everything. It's perfect. It's three mm-hmm. full days to do a quick edit. Mm-hmm. Bomb. Yeah. But I film on Thursday, Dope Zola, and I get that bitch to you hopefully Friday night, <laughs> yeah. Saturday, Saturday, and then Monday, whatever it starts. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's fucking realistically three or four business days. Mm-hmm. No weekend shit whatsoever. I'm trying mm-hmm. to remember, like, we don't need it on Monday anymore. We don't need mm-hmm. to post on Monday Dope Yola channel because then you're like scrambling and your whole weekend is not even there. Mm-hmm. Trying to make it towards like, oh, it's Friday, we're done. Cool. Mm-hmm. Monday, yeah. right back fucking on. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, I'm still doing shit on the weekend, but that's different. It's like filming and editing. That's mm-hmm. my schedule, but that's what I'm trying to do. So there's three uploads a week. I'm just trying my best. It's fucking That's hard. a great call. Yeah. Three uploads a week, man. And every story time, I want it to be a bonus. So there's always four videos every Thursday, one every mm-hmm. Thursday. Plus two story times. Mm -hmm. So six videos a month. There you go. That's our cue. That's my cue to get the fuck out of here. Sorry for rambling, but for everyone out there that runs businesses, you guys can totally relate to what the fuck me and him are talking about. This whole episode. The whole episode is all about fucking business. TCB. All right. All right, guys. Fuck you, train. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're not going to be hearing that bitch very much longer. I'm so excited. Guys, thank you so much. This is episode 35. Right? Yep. Wow. Crazy. We've said goodbye 35 times on this show. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting a little stronger, too. Uh-huh. It's coming up. Episode 100. I'm going to hit that pull up. <laughs> the other day I got on there and hung for a minute. So I went, uh-huh. ah, All right, okay. Mom. And I tried to pull up and I strained my whole arm. Uh-huh. My whole fucking shoulder just episodes. died. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. Um, Guys, thank you so much for watching. Before you get out of here, do us a favor. If you are on youtube and watching leave a motherfucking like on the channel it really helps share it with a homie share it on your page whatever you want to do leave a comment all right always leave a comment and just drop who do you want to see on the show that's the best way of us writing on our guest list the best way of us getting more guests because sometimes you guys drop names i'll text marty like bro great idea how did we not think yeah. about this person you guys have no idea how many of your comments are in my notebook mm-hmm. truly i've written down Whoever fucking suggested Bill Nye the Science Guy, you wrote it. I talked about him today. Yeah. <laughs> I want Bill Nye the Science Guy on here big time. And it's from a fan. A fan actually DM'd it to me and I went, oh, good shit. Oh, no, it was a comment. It was a comment. Drop a comment. Who do you want to see? Or if you want to just say what up, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for supporting us. I won't even get into it, but big time sponsorship shit happening. Let's leave it at that. Very happy, very stoked. Surreal as fuck. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, best way you can ever support the podcast. The best way ever. Tell a homie. Tell a friend. Share a link. Best thing you could do. Thank you guys so much for watching. Marty? Thank you guys. We really appreciate it. I just realized I haven't had my Invisalign in all day. Mm. My teeth just shifted when I went. <laughs> Marty? Gosh. I felt my teeth. Oh, my, oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Marty? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Anything, oh, that anything. just made my whole back cringe when you said my teeth shifted. Bro, my whole back cringe when I thought about <laughs> eating ecstasy through my teeth. <laughs> my whole back shivered. Um, we appreciate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all your support. We're doing our best here. <laughs> oh, man, I fucking love drugs. Let's kick it up a couple it. notches, yeah. Yeah, it's season two. I can already see the set. Fern Gully colors. Here we go. Guys, Thank you so much for watching. This has been another episode of the Dope As Usual podcast from Marty Drastic Graphics and I. Thank you so much for watching. I am Dope As Yola. Have a dope ass day. I'm I'm high, man. I'm high and motivated, which is like the best combination. Do I have paint in my hair still? Perfect. Perfect.